Hello, everybody. I apologize for the long intro screen. You know me. I get distracted. I forget to do things like uh, use the restroom and feed the kitty. So got all that sorted. We'll start out today doing a shout out for Killer because Killer is over here. Killer, I think, is working on some RimWorld stuff today, but recently also got into Ani. Great guy. Go check out his streams. Go show him some love. He's doing the affiliate grind, so we got to try and get him uh, the numbers. Okay. Um... And hi, Barb. I know you're on your way to the gym, so thanks for coming and hanging out. Ooh. All right. We got a lot going on. Uh, let's do what I usually do, and let's check, on our, check in on our skills. I don't think we got to put a lot of people into things. Uh, interested skills, great halls, three shift break, washroom, duplicate barracks. Okay, so... It's pretty stable on that morale. We've got pretty decent morale, essentially, across the board. Uh, Suds, uh, or Franz doesn't have any points. Franz is our grill and uh, farmer. Linus is our builder and mechatronics engineer. Mechatronics builder uh, status. Uh, we could get him into a few other things, but I think we're better off not putting him into anything crazy. Uh, Suds is in critter ranching and improved carry, doing all of our uh, storing and supplying and stuff, because critter ranching at the moment is not a full-time job. It will get to be. We need to get ranching up today. That's going to be one of the goals. Zed is cooking like a madman. Could put, pa could put stuff into digging, but I don't know that we're going to be doing a lot of digging, and I probably don't want Zed leaving the base because they need to be cooking anyway. So we're going to leave Zed where they are. Uh, he's got improved carry and the improved athletics. Killer, we recently put into medicine compounding just because it was a free point. We had the extra points. Killer has been kind of carrying the colony on his back uh, because passion and digging and building. Uh, by the way, guys, all these uh, pawns are named from point redemptions from our viewers uh, and community members. Uh, we got a lot I want to get done today, but let's start out just kind of letting it roll, see where we're at. Uh, a couple of goals for today. I got up my little uh, my little notepad over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Cheers, by the way. I got a little bit of coffee left. All right, so we need to get a deep freeze up. We need to get Radbolt research going. Um, we've got some math on Mealwood. We've got about 800, just shy of 800 cycles left of Mealwood if we can keep everything deep frozen. That's why I want to get that. Uh, we need to get oxygen masks up. We got to do a dash of salt vine farm. Uh, natural gas generator, oil refinery, and petroleum generator. Excellent. Uh, what else can we get going real quick? We got some automation stuff I want to get into. Uh, we got to get into space. We're going to need Radbolt research real soon. Uh, if we could get a deep freeze Radbolt research and some ranching off the ground today, I'd be pretty goddamn stoked. Uh, Trailblazer module, orbital data collection. We need to get into crash plan. Uh, we got to get into space. Although, no, 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 no. That's right. That's right. We got to we gotta be sparing with our research. This has got to happen, but... We don't have a lot of water income yet, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Mm. Oxygen mass is only going to cost us dirt, so let's get that sorted. We want to get into steam engines. We want to get into orbital orbital uh, data. I mean, all of that requires, like, not all of it, but, like, a lot of this requires plastic, which we are going to have a hard time getting. We're going to have a hard time getting plastic. I think one of our goals is going to be getting to our spacefare modules and nose cones. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to need some need some other stuff. Orbital cargo, rocket platform. All right, we got a few things we can do. Let's get the let's get the oxygen mask research done. Because, uh, like I said, it's not going to cost us water. We do do have a, a little bit of green going on the map right now. Uh, hi, Tachyon. That's a, that's a cat butt in my face. Uh, we are gradually smearing out our temperature. In fact, I think 
Now, we got to let this all warm up just a little bit more, I think. Our, our main heat source is this hydrogen vent, and we are using our water. I don't know why that jumped over there. Uh, basically, we're pumping water out of here, and it's pumping through and coming down here. Now, our water is starting to come out at 18, so this is heating it up to, like, 28, and then it's going through. I think... I think we can start hooking up these uh, these loops. Uh, there's no radiant pipes on them, but even with the regular pipes, it's pulling uh, it's pulling heat out of it, which I want to do because we need to get the whole base green. Now, once the base is green, that's going to pose other problems. But it is what it is. Um, this is not going anymore up here. Our, uh, our polluted water vent vent is offline for 26.8 cycles. So what we're doing is we're looping all of the water around the base, dragging all of the heat and pulling out, um, pulling out cold. Once the water gets cold, it loops back up around, prioritize going into our oxygen generation, which we have a backup uh, tank for, because we want to make sure we have plenty of oxygen, so we've been doing that for a while. And then it passes on through here and goes into our refinery, which is where it's heated up again. Now, we've got... We're going to take off aluminum. Uh, we don't need to be generating as much heat. Uh, I, don't want our, I don't want our problem to flip on its head. If you guys notice, we're getting almost yellow down here. So... Our hydrogen vent should be able to help us just enough. We needed this to warm up our cold water and inject it into our system. Uh, at this point, I don't even know that that's essential. We just got to... Heat's going to be something we got to keep an eye on. Now, everything in this playthrough is dependent on everything else. Um, we got... Everything kind of just hinges on everything else, right? Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Uh, we definitely don't need this bad boy over there. We use that to get our infinite hydrogen storage up over here, which we're doing good. We got 30 kilos of space. Uh, 30 kilos per tile across 8 tiles. So we're talking 240 kilos of hydrogen to use for power. Uh, plus whatever's in here, which is another 150 kilos. We got almost 300 kilos of hydrogen to use for power, so I'm happy about that. Our battery banks over here, I'm tempted to actually get rid of them. I think it might be time to kill the battery banks. I think we're going to be starting to shift in the other direction here. Uh, so I think maybe it's time to do that. Uh, drastic, drastic steps to keep things in order. Uh, between our smelting and our hydrogen vent, we seem to be getting plenty of temperature. So let's get rid of these bad boys and start using start using our cooling our our temperature regulation loop. I'm not even going to call it a cooling loop because we're not we're not cooling. We're regulating temperature. We're smearing it out across Sorry, I'm checking on roommate stuff. Uh, got a lot going on in real life, guys. Uh, I went and saw my surgeon yesterday, which we talked about a bit on stream while we were doing RimWorld. Uh, RimWorld is definitely a very, uh, very stressful game uh, with the combat and everything. Ani has its stresses, but I feel like the combat in RimWorld can be a bit more overwhelming than the management in Ani. Uh, but good news is we did finish that playthrough. So we can move on to other playthroughs, which we're not going to be doing right away. Uh, I want to focus down on this. This, The goal of building a monument in this world with all of the hard mode, no teleporters, all that stuff is going to put us... It's going to put us in a, in a difficult situation. So... We need, uh, we need some good planning here. Now, I'm planning on doing a hatch ranch over here for our sage hatches, right? So let's, uh, let's start getting that online as well. Um, I think... Uh, where can we move the massage table? I 
I'm trying to reserve this area up here for radiation research because we've got the satellite here. So we need to move our massage table somewhere. I know this sounds insane, but since we don't even have it in a... Uh, it is split over there to a different... Hang on. Hmm. You know what? I'm willing to... Alright, I gotta think about this. Let's deconstruct our skill scrubber. We could always throw an extra one down. I may put one down over here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I would like to keep some of the power separated. Because we've got two lines. Yeah. Let's leave that there. Well, hmm. Will, will a massage table break a ranch? That'll be the question. Let's, let's, let's test. I don't know for sure, but let's, uh, let's move the massage table over there. Um, we are consuming 12,000 calories a cycle because our dupes are on max hunger. So, that being said, we've got about three days of food over here. It's, uh, it's, get, it's hairy. It's hairy, guys. It's very hairy. Now, I'm trying to be conscious because, as I said, our problem could easily flip on its head. We've got 49 cycles of heat and hydrogen coming in. I feel like that should be enough to get our base up and going, but the last time we brought these uh, side loops on here, uh, we wound up getting the whole, the whole base got a little too cold, because it's still pretty cold over here, but it's starting to warm up a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to get rid of those batteries. We're not going to rely on batteries as much for heat anymore. Uh, I'm not digging it. Not, uh, not about that life at the moment. So I think actually let's get rid of these batteries as well. I know I'm being ridiculous here. We're also going to deconstruct these coal generators. And what we're going to do is maybe we'll put a few batteries up there. It's still a little chilly on that side. So... <sighs> the question is going to be, where do we put our kitchen? Um, we've, got our, we've got a kitchen over here. We might have to crack this open a little bit. I'd like to have... I'd like to have our refrigerators over here. Huh. I think we are going to have to expand out our kitchen over here, which is going to mean bleeding in a little bit more cold. I, but I don't think there's any way to avoid that. So what we need to do is get a deep freezer up, which means a thermal regulator filled with hydrogen. We've got plenty of hydrogen for that, so that's fine. Um, so the... The issue is going to be space and design. I've got a pretty good design overall for a deep freeze setup and whatnot. You kind of need... You kind of need uh, two deep freeze points. And all of it is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to do. But we have automation, so we could we could definitely get automation going. Um, we have these set to uproot over here, so that's good. Julie's helping with, uh, seeds. I'd also kind of like to dive in a little bit into mutating our plants. If we could get exuberant plants, I'd be pretty happy. Uh, we did the math on our duplicates last time, and I wrote down the equations in a notepad because... Because we're probably going to have to do some of that math. Now, when he builds that, we'll see if the massage table breaks the ranch. I don't think it should, but 
we'll see. We are slowly but surely moving all of our random debris on the map over here, which is kind of centralizing our, our, uh, our, our heat issues. Which is fine. We don't need that there anymore. Uh, most of our coal I want going into making refined carbon and rad pills. Um, automated source piped gases and canisters. For, yeah, we're going to need that. That's so how we're going to get away with our, uh, with our ship. It's going to require, ma uh, it's going to, everything in this playthrough is going to require massive amounts of micromanagement. Um, I think what I'd like to do is put some batteries over here in place of those, uh, in place of those coal generators. For now. Because then those batteries will be on the front end of our uh, electricity, which will be a lot better for the way we're doing things. Uh, water is always going to be a problem right now. Uh, we don't have... Our main water positive process is essentially... Thank you for lurking, killer. Hopefully your RimWorld playthrough is going well, and also your, uh, your, Ani, your Ani playthrough. Um, we've got water melting down here from brine ice. Uh, our goal essentially is to get all of our all of our ice up over here. I know that seems counterintuitive, but we got water coming in that's hot, right? Like our water is starting to heat up, so let's get our ice. We have zero brine ice. We're on this whole... I keep saying razor's edge, knife's edge stuff, but that is essentially what we're doing here. We're going through a very, uh... Point three degrees on that, and that'll come up. Five point seven tons of ice, that's uh an extra almost six tiles of water. And since our water situation we can heat it up a little bit with our refinement, uh I like the idea of getting this stuff up here. Usually I just put these all on one tile, but I've noticed there's like a little bit of a glitchy bit when you do that, so we're gonna Okay. So, we need to build a kitchen. I don't think we're ever going to get to a gas grill. I mean, we would literally have to take on a whole fleet of farting dupes and funnel the flatulence to cook with. Cooking with farts does not sound like a real super viable strategy for me, so... Um, we will do a few other things here. So that means we're going to need a grill. 
we're gonna need a deep freeze for ingredients. We're gonna need a deep freeze for like uh, completed food. Uh, I think the deep freeze for completed food is gonna go here, and then ingredients is gonna go back here. Uh, I believe they changed the way that industrial machinery works. I don't think loaders are considered industrial machinery anymore. So that's going to play well for us. Um, I do kind of want to move this. Can I... Yeah, if that's there. So let's uh, deconstruct that. And move that there. Killer's got a lot of work on the build front here, um, and we should have we should be offline with everything that's offline. As far like we got all the meal wood offline that we need to not be wasting calories. We can bring some of it back online once we get a deep freeze, but for now. For now, we're going to try and stay on top of our calories, be eating what we make, and then we'll get to that point eventually. You know what, actually? Let's get this done. I want I want that stuff in there. Printables. There are a few things we could use. Copper isn't a bad choice. We could, in theory, bring up plant murderer, narcoleptic, unempathetic, grease monkey, decorator, strength... Uh, I don't like that. Decreased decor morale bonus. The grease monkey and the strength appeals to me, but we're low pop, so we're going to go for uh, top tier. We'll take the copper. Extra, extra materials to build stuff is never a bad thing. Um, I kind of want to let this just kind of run and get a re-get a feel for this whole colony while we're here. Let's get the aluminum going again. We do need that heat. We've got a lot of, lot of coal to, to suck up, so we'll let the heat happen. All right, our, our arbor trees are almost to the point where they start growing. If we can get our arbor trees to the point where they start growing, we're going to start ranching the pips. Uh, we need to be able to feed them. Wild, they'll replenish themselves even without food. But once we start ranching them, we need those trees to come in so that they can eat the wood. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, as far as staying on top of our water, we just moved the ice over there. or We're in the process of moving the ice. Uh, we've got brine ice melting down here, so once this starts to melt out a little bit more, we'll move a pump in there and pump all that brine ice up there. Uh, the salt being run through our desalinator is going to help us a lot as far as getting sand, because we're down to 11.9 tons of sand. If we absolutely have to... Oh, excuse me. If we absolutely have to, we'll do, uh, do some crushing of some rocks. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be essential if we can stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, we kind of just got to let this uh, run and stabilize. Let's talk long term. So we're, our goal is to get a monument. We don't have teleporters, uh, and we're on hard mode. So that's going to be difficult. We need plastic, steel, glass, and ceramic, I believe. Uh, the ceramic and the steel, I think, are reasonably easy to accomplish. Uh, once we get going a little bit here... Um, we can turn this polluted oxygen vent into a clay factory. We need filtration medium for that, but that links us back around to using this chlorine vent to do a dash of salt vine farm. Dash of salt vine farm means we're going to get table salt and sand as, uh, as we crush the salt, meaning that we'll get filtration medium to make our ceramic, keep our water clean, uh, and we'll get table salt to help with morale. So we got that going. Um... I'm hesitant to take on more than eight dupes on this planet. Sudsy is stressed. That's okay. 
Linus is stressed. Let's get another uh, massage table up and going. All right, so the the these do conflict. We got to get those somewhere else. Um, let's delete those. High priority. Killer needs to get these massage tables up and running. Two reasons. One, uh, he himself is stressed. Sudzi's stressed. Well, I guess this is three reasons. And I'd like this to actually be a ranch, so... It's gotta happen. Um, we might could use to get uh, some more airflow tiles going, but for now... Man, this is going to take a while for me to get back in the headspace of this playthrough. Uh, as I said, we finished the All Endings playthrough of RimWorld. It's been an insane playthrough. Uh, much like our long-term stream world for Ani, uh, I would say it was about somewhere between 350 and 400 hours to get all those endings. Apparently, I'm a sucker for long playthroughs. So, that is in the bag. I will never do an All Endings uh, playthrough on, Ox on uh, RimWorld again. Uh, but it was nice to actually stick with it and get it done. So, very happy about that. Uh, that VOD will be going up with the rest of them. As I was saying yesterday, as we release more and more YouTube content, whether it's VODs or produced videos, uh, I'll start condensing down the release schedule. My goal is to keep uh, VODs, clips, and produced YouTube content uh, scheduled out for at least three months. Well, about three months. I don't want to go too far over three months because I don't want things to lag too far behind the streams. And I don't want to be putting it out much faster than that because then I'll be struggling to keep up with it. But that is, uh, that is the jam there. Eight of seven. That's a problem. Uh, and we can't put sage hatches in here just yet because we need that thing to hatch. Hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to do some planning here, right? Because if we can leave our refrigerators there, I'd be happy about that. But if... Okay, so let's say we put that there. Then we, we go at an angle. Which means we can make this spot right here our food spot. Hang on a second here. Can we somehow put ingredients and finished food in the same spot? Let's say we put this here, right? It would pull ingredients out and put them into the, the cooker, right? And it would pull food out and put them into the refrigerators as we see fit. To get ingredients in, we would have to have them manually drop them in, which is not a problem. We just couldn't have that there. And then to get... Okay, it would create an infinite loop, because if we wanted this sweeper to put it in... 
put the finished food in. Right. Okay, so this could be finished. This could be finished food into the refrigerator. Mm. So then this would be finished food. And that puts that into the refrigerator. It might take it right out of the electric grill and put it there. Or it might take it out of the finished food and put it there. Although we can't have the grill there if this tile is going to be missing, so we'd have to shift that over. But that does make it a lot easier because they can come into the hall and grab food out of here. We're definitely not going to need a larger hall than this, right? So that means that if that comes all the way over to here, we need a... We're going to need to expand this outward. Right? I have a design I like to use, but I'm trying to condense it down a little bit here. Hmm. All right, let's pause this for just a second, right? So we can do some planning without our dupes accidentally building stuff. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that's going to be there, right? That's going to put a metal tile there with insulated tiles like that, right? Not bad. And that would be our finished food. Now, we need to be able to get ingredients into here, right? So what if we put that there like that? right? This would be the hole. And that would mean that this thing would need to be able to see down here, so that could go there, right? One, two, three, four. That goes there, this shifts over by one. That would put ingredients into the grill, and then we could put a loader. One, two, three, four. We could put a loader here above the grill so that it puts finished food in there, and that gets dropped in there. So ingredients would be added to a loader somewhere over here, outside of the range of either of these. Those ingredients would get put into here. Uh, this would then grab the ingredients, put it here, and grab the finished food, put it into a loader, and send it down here. Right? Man, this is kind of a waste of a bit of space. Mm. But I gotta be okay with that, right? So then that puts everything... We've already got hydrogen down there, too, because the way it's collecting. That might make it even easier. So let's just think about that loop, right? Ingredients get put here. That tile means this can't see the ingredients, which is fine. This can see the ingredients, and once we break down the wall, it'll be able to see the, the uh, grill. The ingredients will go into the grill. Any finished food goes into a loader outside of this range and goes down here. 
now that that finished food is there, this will either grab finished food from the grill or grab finished food from there and supply one of our refrigerators at a small amount of food so we minimize waste. The refrigerators will be in a carbon pit so that'll keep it fresh even longer and kill any germs that may or may not get onto it. Uh, they will load... We could stick a loader like over here for them to load ingredients in. Eventually, if we want to fully automate it, we could put fully full automation in somewhere. If we do wind up getting to the point where we have a central storage, I'd kind of like to put that over here. Ooh, ooh, we need, we need mushers. Okay, we need mushers. Because lice loaf is going to be our main thing. So we're not even really going to use the grill until we get to the point where we're doing barbecue, omelets, and if we need to, we'll do mush fry, but we need... So then those could go, like, here and here, right? Then this should be able to see four that way and put those there and put finished food. So then we would have basically floor there, floor there, and we would have a ladder here to make that easier. And like I said, this would shift over one. I mean, again, it's an awkward shape refrigerator, but for now that might work. And if we get to the point where we're grilling and we're not using the mushers anymore, this space here could be a second grill. And then the loader for the finished food would go, like, literally, like, right there. Then the rails would... Doesn't really matter how the rails go, right? Rails would go like that, and then to get into here... To minimize rails, we could put one here. But it doesn't really matter where it goes. It just matters that it goes there, right? Hmm. And then we need... We need radiant pipes... Steel would be optimal. We've got 300. 100 per tile leaves us with 200. So, oh no, 100 per tile leaves us with 100. So, that would be all of our steel right there for that. Then it's a matter of putting in the thermoregulator, right? I mean, it's screaming to go right there. So let's say the thermal regulator goes there. And then we move these here. We would need it to be essentially something like that, right? And so, yeah. And then under ventilation, do we have the gas pipe thermo sensor would go there. Um, let's make that out of copper. Now, the thing is, is we're going to have to, uh, and it's for the sake of that, let's put that there. Those don't have to be insulated at that point. They can be those. Right. Now, you guys might remember me messing with all this stuff back from uh, our other base, our second planet base on my previous playthrough. It's a lot of nonsense. Now, okay. We're going to want insulated pipes in here, and this is going to have to come through there. 
and then overflow to the output, which is going to be here, right? Which would go there, there, there. And that would be essentially the entire setup. Um, minus the fact that we need radiant pipes for our cooling loop. So let's say out of aluminum, because aluminum is like one of the best for radiant pipes. So we do that, right? Uh, the issue with running radiant pipes, we can't run, we can't run uh, pipes through here. Even insulated ones are going to get popped by the amount of hydrogen problems. So what we're gonna, we would have to do then is bring this here. We could run that under here, and then we could run this like that, and then get it onto this loop here. And we need electricity in there, right? And if all of this is going to be there, it really does make sense to go with conductive wire. Because I'd love to just have all of this on a single wire, so conductive would probably be our best bet to just have this all running re relatively smoothly, and then we can put two transformers feeding into that. Right? Right. Okay. Oh, Jesus. So we don't have conductive wire researched, and I feel like that's pretty essential for what we're going to do here. So let's get conductive wire going on the research. It's going to be one of the essential ones. That's right here. It's going to cost us a little bit of water, but we're working on melting ice. That all being said, we need to do this in the right order. Uh, so let me do this. Let me take a quick screen cap of this. And where am I going to put that? I'm going to put that over here real quick. And so that's kind of our design for our kitchen. And I think that'll work just fine. But like I said, I don't want to do this out of order because we can make use of a few things here. So that being said, let's cancel this. Cancel the metal tiles. Um, and we're going to try and come at this from the bottom so that we can keep that hydrogen in there and let that accumulate and push out the stuff we don't want. It's kind of how I'm feeling about this. So let's cancel that and that, right? And this insulated tile and that insulated tile can get deconstructed. And we can come up here like that. Um, and then if we cancel conveyor rails, because we don't want those built yet. Hey, Julie, uh, we're planning a kitchen. So we're going to do a shout out for Julie over here. Julie is an amazing streamer and friend. Uh, we're doing a co-stream of Stardew Valley on Fridays, and Julie streams Oxygen Not Included. How is your all uh, all achievements run going, Julie? Last I checked, I think you were down to like two of them, and it was they were very grindy. Are they uh, are they coming along nicely? Um. Oh, the thermoregulator itself. What do we want to build that out of? I'd love to build it out of steel, but I think we're going to have to go with aluminum. I have two left, but I haven't streamed Ani in a while. Ah, okay. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Th 
think in just one more stream I'll be finished. That's excellent. You got any plans for after that, or is that too far ahead to think about? I think getting all of that built, oh, we need the automation wire as well. Want to try the lights out mod or a different map other than Terra? Oh yeah, D I gotta tell you, playing a different map, especially this frozen forest one, has been uh, very interesting. I've, uh, I've messed around with most of the maps, but not brave enough to try ultra hard. I mean, you, you don't have to. You don't have to be as crazy as I am. I, I definitely have a bit of masochism in me, apparently. Ultra hard is hard, uh, me. How you doing? Welcome on in. Uh, this is my first ultra hard mode, uh, and with the no teleporters, I turned too many things to hard all at once, I kind of feel like, but I'm up for the challenge. You know, no teleporters, frozen planet, ultra hard mode, first time doing any of that, so I kind of feel like I went from zero to 60 in like three seconds, but not dead yet. Me, no. Did you say you tried it and you died by cycle 16, or was that somebody else? Did you, uh, did you restart and give it another go? Our base is actually starting to get kind of green. Haven't restarted yet. Yeah, I highly advise keeping your team as small as possible, as long as possible, and getting this hydrogen vent open as soon as you can. Uh, thank you guys for nudging me into doing the infinite storage. I, th I think this was the, like, the pivot point. Like, with all of those things turned up hard, not doing infinite storage was just not a great idea. So, uh, I think the infinite storage is a nice balance to all the other hard shit we're doing here. Ran out of food at 16. Not not surprised at all. Not surprised at all. We're going to turn this off again. I feel like, uh, I mean, I want them to make the steel as it comes in because we're going to need that steel, but where our water, I don't want to, I don't want to pivot too hard into having a heat problem, if that makes any sense. Like, this could go the other direction quickly if we're not careful. Our water is starting to get up to that 24, 25 degree point, which is good because we've got a lot of cold to smear out of here real soon, but... Oh, ice is melting. Excellent. kilos 25 go oh, that's dirt okay 
Okay. Slowly but surely. Slowly, slowly but surely. I think we're. I think we did our math correctly last time. We might have to bring one or two mealwood back online if we have problems. Uh, you're halted because of body temperature. It's just this balancing act, guys. I feel like one or two more play sessions and we'll be able to get it. Uh, for everybody who has been here for the last few weeks, we've been doing RimWorld on Monday and Tuesday, and then Ani Thursday, Friday, and then doing our playthrough with Julie on Fridays, Wednesday and Thursday, Ani, sorry. And then Fridays, we've been doing Stardew with Julie. Um, uh, what we're doing this week is we finished that RimWorld playthrough yesterday, the one that's been going forever. So we are finally taking a little bit of a break from RimWorld, and we're going to focus down on getting this, this playthrough caught up and done because that's what needs to happen how have you liked the stardew playthrough so far it's good it's fun it's not like i'm not as obsessed with it as i am with ani and rimworld i don't foresee myself doing multiple playthroughs but i'd like to get through at least a year with you and uh you know get the get the community center up and running i think i think it's a good game for me to get a full playthrough through but i don't see it having a lot of replayability for me personally um i'm not super interested in the so story stuff and i know that's a really big part of it so i feel like that's where it loses me a little bit is i like the mines i like uh, i like some of the grindy nature i like clearing the fields and i think we're going to have a lot of fun making the farm look nice and making a cool farm but uh since i'm not super into the whole story thing i feel like that's like such a big part of it the late game stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to give it a fair shake. So many people love the game, uh, including you and Linus and a few other people, that uh, I would feel remiss in my duties as a gamer if I didn't give it a give it a, a proper chance. You know what I mean? Um, and once we get to some late game stuff, maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe I'll be like, ooh, I like this. You know? Year two and three. Okay. I mean, maybe we'll keep going then. Maybe it'll become a whole thing. God, this whole playthrough is just like watching timers. We're down to 25. You know what? I'll bring these back online for the for the sake of these are going down in body temperature. I think we left one or two extra plants on past our math, but if we can get a deep freezer up, I think I'd be okay with that. I would eventually like to move our uh, water. Uh, I think I do want to move that down here. But yeah, this deep freezer, I feel like, is very important. Couple of reasons. It's going to help interject some heat because the thermal regulator is going to be creating heat. Uh, it's also... It's also going to keep our food frozen. And on a map where we have limited food, uh, having frozen food is a good thing, in my opinion. Yeah, we're going to get some cold leaking in here. So why don't we priority six the... The insulated tiles. I also kind of feel like we might need to get a duplicate gym going. I've been zooming through a season a stream, so... But well, we've been zooming through a, a season a stream, so maybe. Right. Well, I mean, if we start to get towards the end of season one, of uh, year one and we want to keep it going, I'm, I'm down for that too. I'm very much approaching it with a uh, let's see what happens type of mindset. You know what I mean? Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. We got to get through 23 cycles without without any fresh influx of water. Okay. I'm a little nervous, but I think we got this. We've gotten pretty good at balancing this thing. And we'll uh we'll do what we have to. How's our research coming along? Almost there on the conductive wire. I'd like to get the whole kitchen on its own uh conductive wire line. So, we'll worry about getting Transformers for that going shortly. It's a very interesting playthrough. A lot of our, uh, a lot of our industry is going to be in the base. And we're going to be cooling it with the loop. Or heating it with the loop. Well, cooling the industry, heating the rest of the base with the loop. Um, the cool thing is, is that even if we do start to swing in the other direction where we've got a lot of heat... We can literally just break out some of the insulated tiles to bleed in some of the cold from the outer areas. So there is that. Uh, as per usual, we're starting off a little on the slow side today because arbor trees are starting to grow. All right, let's let that go a little longer because I don't want those to come offline at any point. This is going to be a bit of an odd space over here, but I'm okay with that. We can we can find uses for every inch of this map at one point. We're going to have to decide where our rocketry program is going to be as well. A um, lot of decisions to make here, but we're gonna we're gonna hold that one for a day at least a day or two of streaming. What I'm trying to do over here is essentially use the fact that hydrogen rises and it's collecting up here. Because I usually have to do something where I pump hydrogen in and then use that to create my, uh, my sterile environment. But if we can actually use the hydrogen that's already naturally going in here to make that happen, that's going to save us a lot of work. Uh, we are going to... Barb, welcome back! How you doing? How is the gym? We're working on a deep freezer on a map that's frozen. Imagine that. Stretch, thank you very much. Coming right in and taking care of me. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh. All right, we got massage table action going. We've got our conductive wire now. It sounds like Ani, yeah. I just, I wanna make sure that we don't have any problems with food. Um, if we overproduce, I want it to stay frozen, because we're already getting pretty green, so we could easily wind up going in the other direction. There's plenty of cold to bleed back in to help manage it for then, but I don't, I don't want to have the opposite problem where it gets too hot. I mean, this thing is outputting 500 degrees, so it's going to help warm the base up pretty quickly. I feel like by the time this thing goes dormant in 45 cycles, our core base should pretty much be at the spot it needs to be at. So... So at that point, we're going to have to pivot and start making... We're going to have to link up heating and cooling. We're basically going to use the hydrogen to heat and then balance that with an aqua tuner so we can shift that heat to uh, a chamber so that we can actually 
Um, shift it to a chamber so that we can actually use that to create. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going to have mushers, a grill, a thermoregulator, refrigerators, and two sweepers and a loader over here. So the kitchen really needs to be on a single conductive wire, or we're going to have to run multiple regular wires over here, which is not, not optimal in my opinion, so... Uh, we're going to get rid of this thing. I don't want anybody composting right now. I want the polluted dirt to go to the sage hatches. We'll run igneous with our stone hatches for a while, but... Oh, we need an evolution chamber as well. Alright, that's got to go on the list. Because we're getting overcrowded in here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Thank you for uh, thank you for keeping on top of it. Because I'd frankly like to like to. Uh, oh, thank you for the hydrate. I'd like to overproduce and freeze rather than try and stay on that edge and risk food food spoilage. Um, and guys, I've been, I've been doing some thinking, I've been doing some researching on numbers and stuff like that, and I'm going to allow myself to start going longer. Uh, I might even start earlier some days as well. Um, I'm noticing that for the particular style of streaming that I do, longer streams are actually a good thing. So I'm going to try and stay, uh, I'm going to try and keep that going. So that being said, if we uh, if we need to go longer to accomplish our goals today, I will. I do still want to spend a lot of time hanging out and chat. Um, I'm gonna definitely want to be playing a lot on the Minecraft server. I've got some ideas for some really cool builds. Squiddy wants to start doing co-op streams on Saturdays from our Minecraft server, so that's uh, that's definitely a possibility. As long as we can keep ideas going and flowing, I'm very uh, very happy to do that. We're getting, we're getting nice and toasty green. God, that's such a beautiful green though, right? Just 17C looking nice across the board. Right where we want to be. Ooh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, we'll coordinate more. Uh, I think we gotta... If we get some good ideas going, we could do a lot of really cool stuff. Alright, let's start actually ranching the pips now that the arbor trees are starting to come online.
I think we can cancel these. Oh, wait. negative 16 and it's down to negative okay so we should a lot of this brine ice should be melting out shortly go make the super smelter excellent oh that'll be awesome I would definitely like to start super smelting some charcoal. Uh, I'm, I don't like having to go and dig for coal all the time, so I'd love to just farm the hell out of some, some easy-to-farm wood and, like, do a charcoal, a, a run of charcoal, just to get us a boatload of charcoal, both for the smelter and for making torches and all the other stuff we got to make. I feel like coal is, like, a very limited resource. Although J-Bomb... I think J-Bomb's very close to having that... Um, Wither Skeleton Farm off the ground. Uh, so that should be providing some good coal for the server. <sighs> Body temperature, huh? Oh, it's tempting to take on Nisbet as a second cook, but especially since Emily wants to name her. But we really need a hauler more than we needed a set more than we need a second cook. Julie's been doubling as a cook. Hang on. Let me look at the dupes we have, right? Zed can do grilling and digging and has some suit maintenance. He's our main cook, right? Julie is into grilling for no real reason other than we can afford to have her doing other stuff. But could theoretically help with hauling if she's not researching. Ooh, do we take the Nisbet? If we take the Nisbet, we could shift Julie to help haul and store and do all that, which is what we're kind of looking for as a hauler and storer. Because right now, Julie is helping with grilling. Yeah. I think we might take the Nisbet. All right, all this stuff that we took offline before, let's just let's just get it all back online. Especially since some of these are having temperature problems still. Our tiles are just barely coming up in temp. All right, and we are starting the pip ranching process. Ooh. All right, let's get the Nisbet. And let's immediately name you Almost Emily. It's risky, but it is what it is. All right, Nisbet's coming online. Uh, or Emily's coming online. Immediately put her into grilling. Uh, we'll leave Julie on the priorities she's on for now, because it's going to take Nisbet some time. Well, actually, 13 cuisine. We'll let both of them go. Um, uh, but let's get her a proper schedule. And let's...
and then let's get her priorities. Do the plants need to be alive to be... No, they do not. They can be stifled. They just have to exist. Cooking, and what do you have as secondary points? You're garbage at creativity. Mm. You're zero across the board on everything else. I'd say let's put you secondary into farming. Because there's a lot of farming to do. Yeah, like you'll notice the uh, the arbor tree here is stifled, but we still have a nature reserve. Same thing with the oxy fern. There are two stifled oxy ferns and a stifled arbor tree, but we still have the nature reserve. Okay. Uh, we should get a skill scrubber back up. I think we can put that in the ranch without breaking the ranch. And since this ranch isn't online, we can just do that for now. So now we're up to 14,000 calories a day. 28 for two days. So 42 for three days of food. I want this stuff to melt so badly. But we can't afford to, like, just put that heat... We, we can't afford to lose the mass, and we can't afford to spend more heat to melt that. We can, however, preemptively start drawing a handful of pipes. Uh, but let's put those on a priority of four because I want I want all this stuff built first. All right, so the skill scrubber can stay in there and not cause problems. That's excellent. Slowly but surely grinding away. Slowly but surely grinding away. Let's put in a few more strategically placed airflow tiles. We have a lot of this map cleaned up as well. Suds has been doing a good job hauling stuff, so... Seems like everybody's kind of helping haul stuff, too, so... Since we're getting stifled growth, let's get some more aluminum ore going just to interject some more heat. Uh, J-Bomb does. 
Yeah, J-Bomb's got all the good stuff. Iron Farm, uh, Wool Farm, a few other things. Uh, a lot of villagers. Uh, J-Bomb has definitely gotten a lot of infrastructure going. Uh, I believe there might be a few other iron farms. Um, I thought you had one, but you said you didn't. Uh, but there may be a few other ones out there. So I know J-Bomb has definitely got reliable iron for quite some time. We've got how long on this? 21.8 cycles. We should be fine. More ice is melting. This will melt soon enough. This stuff will melt soon enough. It will also be nice to get past the point where everybody's got hypothermia. I would I would very much like to not have hypothermia every day. But I did put up a picture of the heat overlay from the last play session. Uh, at the end of it, and I looked at it before we got on. We've already spread more green out. Um, our, the most of our cold is down here, so that's why we're having trouble keeping these going. Yes, if you evaporate polluted water, it gives you dirt and steam. Uh, I have that go. I have that going in the uh, long-term playthrough that we uh, we put a bow on. So, if you have steam turbines, it's a really great way to do it. Like, in theory, what we could do is we could put a thermal, like a, uh, a geothermal plant. If we had access to plastic, we could put a geothermal plant in here. And then boil our polluted water inside the geothermal plant and then remove excess water pressure for our water. Um, the way I would do it, because I've had problems with polluted water giving off polluted oxygen and screwing up, not necessarily screwing up, but causing complications with the steam turbines because they can't suck in polluted oxygen. So the way I would do it is I would packet limit, like for salt water, it's not, it, it's not a big deal because you don't get any polluted oxygen. Hey, Laz, good morning. But the way I would do it for polluted water going forward to process water using volcano heat or geothermal heat is I would packet limit uh, pipes to 1K because anything under one kilo in a pipe can't state change. And I would rotate the polluted water till it got above boiling temperature and then put it out so that it came out the vent as steam and dirt. Yep, me is, me is on top of it, exactly me. Salt water, you dump right in. Don't worry about it, but uh, packet limiting into pipes. That does provide the situation where you have to kind of do the math, like how many how many loops of pipes do you have to do to keep up with the throughput of whatever you're boiling. You know, so our cool sl salt slush guy, our, our cool slush guys are out here, is outputting uh, 4.2 kilos per second when it's erupting or yeah 4.2 kilos per second so if we want to keep up with the throughput then we would need three pipes so we would have to pump into pipes that are then splitting to uh valves i think it is whichever the one is that you can limit the amount that goes through at once and then it would split it into four pipes that have one 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 and point two and then run those in a loop inside the steam room until they state change and then you dump out the steam and the, the dirt and sweep the dirt with an auto sweeper that's made of steel 
Uh, all of that is very, very doable on a normal playthrough, but... Um, on this playthrough, with all this cold we're dealing with, mm, we don't have plastic. If we had more, if we had plastic on this map, it would be a completely different story. But we don't have plastic, so. You can also just have a crap ton of steam in the steam room to stop water from off-gassing. Um, I tried that, me. Um, I had a problem in my industrial area. I could not... Yeah, exactly. Less reliable. I always still wound up with a handful of, like, little bits of polluted oxygen. I had so much pressure, both in CO2 and in steam in my steam room, because it, it was a hot industrial brick, and I still wound up with it off-gassing. Because every once in a while, something happens where, like where the polluted water is it's off get like a gas uh, a tile of gas gets on it that's below and allows it to overpress it for just a moment so uh i think if i was going to do the polluted water thing again i would definitely i would cool the petroleum generators or what was whatever was generating the uh, the polluted water in that playthrough it was pol petroleum generators uh and then bring the heat into the steam room via a cooling loop and then pump out of that room, use a gas pump to pump the CO2 out for the Slicksters, and Jesus, so many things. I think you guys, uh, I think you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, I'd like that oxygen to get pushed out, but it does mean we'd have to, we have to wait for more hydrogen to filter up that way. It's also why I'm trying to get a couple of vents uh, to go up this way. I'm actually going to replace that with a tile. I want the hydrogen coming up here to shift over here. Actually, yeah, okay. I did that. Probably going to undo that quickly because it looks like we already got most of the most of the oxygen out of there. Excellent. I am going to wait because if I tell him to build the insulated tiles here, it's going to shift in there while he's doing it. That's just Ani, you know. It'll just it'll just hose you. Um, what I'd like to do is start digging out this stuff as well. A lot of theoretical stuff going on here. Like, I would theoretically love to get our water tank moved down here. Which is, which wouldn't be too much of a problem, right? We could just let this water pump and then not inject the vents. Those could inject down here. But I also don't want to waste the mass down here, so...
This ice I might have to dig, just for the sake of pathing. And thank you guys all for hanging out. Uh, these max difficulty challenges are really fun. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying it a lot. Uh, definitely going to keep on max difficulty on RimWorld as well. I never really thought of myself as the type of person to do a lot of challenge playthroughs, but it is becoming more and more apparent that I like a challenge. A little bit of stress is good, right? These systems seem to be working. Um, we will probably move our carbon skimmer like down here. We'll put like a wall over here, make this our main tank. Uh, put airflow tiles, and then put our skimmer down here. But not any time immediately at the moment. I just need a little bit more hydrogen to push up into that little pocket just to guarantee that when we wall stuff in, see there's a little oxygen in the side. That's why I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it do that. That oxygen should start shifting over and eventually get pushed out of there by the hydrogen. But Ani mechanics, right? We are down to 17,000 calories, and I think it's because I'm spreading the chill out, uh, spreading the heat out a little too much. Uh, let's, uh, let's do what we did before and take these offline. I don't want to take these offline because I want those arbor trees to run. Um, this might cause a little bit of problem with that, but we'll see. Melting smooth stone for blast furnaces. Ooh, nice. Blast furnaces won't burn wood. Uh, they will only burn ores. So if you're going to do a smelter for blast furnaces, it's only going to burn ores, not wood or food. Not that, not you know, not that you have to do it out of wood. Not you have to do it for wood. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to make smokers, blast furnaces, and uh, regular furnaces, that would be awesome. We could even put a sorting system so you drop everything into a single chest and it all gets sorted to the, to the smelter that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I'll do that part. I still do want to do a pork chop farm. Ooh, 
Maybe I could do a pork chop farm with Squiddy on Saturday. I think that would be a nice community build. Because we have a crimson forest right there, and it shouldn't be too hard to get the materials we need, and that way everybody can have reliable food. Because he's... He's, he runs out of food. I run out of food. I think all of us tend to run out of food at the moment. So rather than try and push to get the farmers online for golden carrots, I mean, they're there once we get to that point. But uh, to have everybody have a lot of pork chops, uh, I think that would be great. And I've got, a, I've got a solid design that works. I could even go and take screenshots from my single player world. That thing outputs a fuck ton of pork chops and, uh, and leather. Uh, for anybody who's not sure what we're talking about, we do have a community SMP for anybody uh, in our Discord uh, and community in general. Uh, if you'd like to join us, Nightbot, just put up the links to the Discord and my YouTube. Uh, if you go over to the Discord and thumbs up the rules in the Minecraft section, it'll open up all the other channels and you'll be able to add your name to the whitelist. Myself or one of the other mods will add you to the whitelist uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we do try to look into everybody because we've had a few people try to join that were not so great people so we do uh we do our little diligence we don't go crazy we're not doing some sort of uh full-on background check on everybody or anything but we do like to make sure the people coming into our our community embody our our ideals of help and support and kindness uh we're all about taking care of each other here uh, i always say that the games bring us together but the community keeps us together and as such uh uh, we are all very particular about taking care of each other and making sure that the community stays a kind and, and uh, wonderful place for everybody. Killer is helping cook at the moment, which means we can have him doing other stuff. Do we want to risk walling this in? Let's give it a shot, but let's also double check our overlays. Automation wire is in place. Radiant liquid pipes are in place. Power wire is in place going up that way. That's perfectly fine. We don't need any rails going through there. So I think we're all right. So yeah, let's... Uh... Oh, these are not reachable. That's why he's not doing these. We need a couple of ladder segments there as well. Uh, let's priority six these so they actually get done. Yeah, I think, I think I'll mention that to Squiddy. I think a pork chop farm would be good because it's like a server project. It'll help everybody. I apologize for the beeping. They're working on some stuff outside, apparently. We're up to 73 kilos, almost 74 kilos per tile in our infinite hydrogen storage. We're going to have power for a while. No, it's okay. I'll talk to him afterwards, Barb. I like talking to Squiddy. Squiddy is one of my favorite people. I'm so glad that Felix guided his uh, raid in here that day and uh, introduced us. Yeah. No, I, I love everybody in the community. You know, we've had a handful of troublemakers, as I said, throughout the time, but we have uh, we have slowly but surely weeded out the troublemakers, so. Oh, you know what? I have no radiant pipe down here. That's why we're having problems. Okay, that's going well.
Is an aluminum tile better? Let me check something real quick. Thermal conductivity of 205, specific heat capacity of 0.9. Steel. 54. Oh, I think aluminum tiles. You can't make aluminum radiant pipes, but you can make aluminum tiles. So I think we go aluminum tiles on that. So we're going to go boop, and we're going to go boop. We're going to set that so it doesn't, doesn't go right off the bat. Oh, and we need... one of those there. Excellent. We are going to have to get hydrogen over there, though. That'll be the fun part. And by fun, I mean obnoxious. All right, let's let him build that. Let's keep on top of everything else. Okay. We got heat in this corner that's not being used, so let's see how we can make that a thing. I see exactly how we can make that a thing. What we're going to do is we're going to jump this there. No, can't do that. Fill that first, then go to here. Hmm. Let's build that there. And I'll worry about that after, but I think I got an idea for that spot, just so we can absorb some of this heat from that hydrogen generator. gonna keep killer working so basically the heat that this is creating is going here and that gets bled out by these plants and then by the time it loops around and goes through here it comes back in here and picks up more heat to go back through the system and heat up the arbor trees which are now pretty much online uh, we're ranching the pips now
17K. A little nervous, but we got plenty of food on the vines, right? Stress is down to 30, but we've got four sick dupes. Sick dupes don't work as fast, but... I mean, if we have to, we'll start mushing a little bit again. Our water seems to be in a positive place, uh, which means our bathrooms are helping keep that up. But we've got some stuff on the vines here, so... I'm glad we got a Nisbet for Emily. Uh, Emily is awesome. She comes in and hangs out a lot. Very big fan of Oxygen Not Included, so very happy to have her here. Very glad we were able to get her the dupe she wanted. Uh, I'm going to go over to my queue and actually complete all because we did all of that stuff. So we'll get that nice and cleaned up for everybody in case you guys want to do some more stuff uh, redemption-wise. Uh, we've got redemption for Name Colonist, which can be used here in Oxygen Not Included or over on RimWorld. Uh, we also have Name Pets, which really doesn't apply to Ani because you can't change the name of the animals. Plus, they age cycle out anyway. Uh, but you can name pets in RimWorld and in Minecraft. Minecraft, they tend to be around permanently. RimWorld, they often wind up... Uh, either starving, getting slaughtered, or becoming meat shields in combat. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend redeeming redeeming the pet re, uh, the name of pet when it comes to RimWorld. Um, but, you know, uh, so few people did. Killer redeemed name the pet for a bear named Fred. I honestly don't know what happened to Fred. I don't know if Fred starved or got killed by somebody. No, Penny is still alive, actually. Penny is still chilling. Uh, she's not really doing much to help the colony, but she's still there. Uh, if I could get a mate for her uh, and get a few dogs going in that colony, that would have been awesome. But we're done with that playthrough. Um... Yeah, um, I was just about to say if we can get, and I'm like, wait a second, that playthrough is over. Playthrough's done. Let's get a few batches of refined carbon going. It's going to get us a little bit more uh, more heat. Killer will get that sorted shortly. Excellent. clapping. Very excited. Alright, with that there, we're going to snip that and move that like that, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that over. And we're going to bring that up. We're going to snip that there. Well, we will snip that there. For now, we're going to do that. Because uh, we want to be able to get some of this heat out of this corner. So we want that to jump over there. That'll be like that, I think. 
Uh, we'll even put radiant pipe here. What kind of printable? Calories would be nice. Steel. Can't even look at the dupes. We need steel in spades. Okay. Um, we're going to put that there. That one back in. We'll put that one in shortly. Um. Hmm. All right, guys. I am gonna have to take that first restroom break. Uh, liquid in equals liquid out, and all that jazz. I've been uh, drinking a lot of coffee. I'm going to quickly put up the links to Bobby's band page and Spotify. If you guys enjoy the music on the channel, please click over there. Give Bobby some love from me. Uh, I'll see everybody in just a few moments, and we'll continue on with this absolute madness. Take it easy.
All right, guys, we are back in action. Thank you all for understanding that I'm a biological creature who uses uh, uses the restroom. Uh, we're going to get a lot done today. Uh, there is quite a bit on the table. So this is going to take a lot of the stream to get a proper kitchen up. We took on a new dupe, so I'm continuing to go slow. If we hadn't taken on a new dupe, I might have already pressed that two button. Uh, but... I got to keep an eye on our calorie up and down. Once we get the deep freeze up, we might start overproducing calories. Posture. Every time you say sir, I'm like, oh yeah, posture. And we've got 19 cycles till this comes up. You know, it always feels like it takes forever to get stuff done in this game, but when you really look at the number of cycles that pass, like, it's not that bad. Degrees coming out at forty six. I think it's time to start bringing these back in. It would be really cool if we could get some Paku. That that would be pretty awesome. Should I make the super smelter a building on the in the fishing village? If if that makes sense, Barb, absolutely. You could uh, you could make it part of the blacksmith. You know, like you go to the blacksmith to smelt your ores and stuff like that. And then you could theoretically like hide the smelter itself underground. So you just go into the into the blacksmith, and you dump all your stuff into a smelting chest, and then that goes down to the super smelter. Uh, if you leave me a little bit of room for redstone, I could quickly set up a filtration system so that things get dumped into the super smelter uh, reasonably quickly. But yeah. That could work. Plus, I mean, that gives you a digging project, right? Digging is always fun in Minecraft. Okay, so now the question is going to come down to hydrogen. How do we want to get the hydrogen in here? What's the quickest path to make that happen? Um...
Francis' new video was not what I expected, but also what I expected because you told me. Yeah, I watched it this morning as well, Sweetney. Um, it was fun to watch. I don't really feel like he got too deep into the playthrough, but it's interesting. Uh, I've seen Adam do Winston Waves, so I kind of... He's like, do you guys want to do more of the Winston Waves, like uh, SWAT, SWAT Wizard style, or do you want to do the, uh, the Void? So I'm kind of leaning towards voting for Void. I haven't done it yet. I'll do it after stream, because I've never seen anybody do the Void Storyteller, and I think Francis would have a lot of fun with that. But, it, you know, it's... I'm not really sure what to expect. The thing is, is it makes sense that he's going into modded because he's pretty much completely broken, um, completely broken the base game, right? The void storyteller would be fun as hell. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the way I'm leaning as far as like he was saying he wants input on what to do. I think I'm leaning towards void storyteller personally. Got eight of seven creatures. Um, I'm going to let that just deal with itself for now. We'll get an evolution chamber going as well. And some incubation. But right now, I, I just, I can't even think about that. We've got 41 cycles of hydrogen and heat in pudding. Yeah, I keep thinking we need to turn this off to stop injecting heat, but it's going to take probably all of that 41 cycles to regulate this base. And I might do some cheeky stuff here. We'll let Killer build the things I'm having him build right now. But... I'm back. I saw you unbuilding the deep freezer earlier. Did you build it back? Oh, um, I had to. I had to cancel. You got. I want to do it in the right order. So we we got this section of it built. Uh, the idea being that if we had built all this stuff up here first, the hydrogen gas would have leaked up, and this allowed us to use the flow of gases to fill these with hydrogen, so that we can make sure that we have hydrogen in our freezer tiles and hydrogen in here as a transfer medium for temperature. Uh, right now, we're having Killer build all the infrastructure needed to actually get the hydrogen gas to the loop. And once that's done and there's hydrogen in the loop, I will start building out the rest of this kitchen over here. But yeah, we're, we're slowly but surely doing it while also trying to maintain temperature. Uh, we're starting to look pretty green across the board, but we only got 41 cycles over here. How you doing today, Zed? I'm going to do a shout out for Zed because Zed is an amazing guy and streamer. I know that I say that about everybody who comes in, but I really do mean it. Uh, our community is amazing. Uh, it's gotten through me through all of the hardest times in my life, and I have made some amazing friends here. So, guys, go check out Zed's channel. Give him a like. Give him a follow. Um, he does Ani as well as a bunch of other games. Uh, variety streamer. Been working hard today. Peeked in here and there. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for lurking while you're working. Um, you know, don't uh, don't don't hurt your career on my account. But it's great to see you. Of course, ever anytime, anytime. And if I forget, bust my chops. Barb has been helping me with that. I think I'm gonna have to mod her so she can use the uh, the official command.
The melting ice has definitely gotten us through a lot here. Yeah, Barb is definitely going to be waving the sword. Let's get that built first. Like, I want to get the loop filled. But... This is one of those things the whole system has to actually be in place. You know? Uh, one part of the system doesn't work without the other parts of the system, so... Yeah, even with our industry and the hydrogen vent, we're still fighting temps over here. When he finishes building this stuff, we'll start getting the rest of the kitchen put together. That's going to go there. What did I say? We were going to put that there. One of those there. We don't need insulated tiles there, but we need one there. Temporary. Indiana Jones? I don't know. What Did I say something about Indiana Jones? Uh, Indiana Jones and Mario have always been stuck in my head, so it is entirely possible. Yeah, probably. I probably did. You know what? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and gauge this so we don't under or over fill the loop, but. If we deconstruct this stuff and it releases hydrogen, that's fine, because the hydrogen is just floating up to the top of our base anyway, so... God, I love this base. There's something so satisfying about taming, taming a uh, really, really intense environment. We literally need two more blobs. All 
Okay, and it's time to actually get this done. Break those out there. Um, where is Linus? Linus. We got a double tap up on your building here. Linus is the only one who can actually build the auto sweepers and loaders and stuff, so... I screwed up, guys. I screwed up. Forgot one thing. I was like, oh, I gotta make sure. Yeah. Shipping rails. Ugh. We're going to draw that because we can get at just about everything else, but... Mm. Always, always miss something, right? Always miss something. Let's go a little faster now. This might cause like that whole thing where I let the hydrogen go up. Mm, now I now I regret it. See now I, I screwed that up. So and I, in fact Linus, let's get Linus operate second. We don't need you doing as much operating as we do building. I guess uh, I guess we'll just have Killer work on this stuff because we'll have we'll have Lin we have to have Linus do this stuff. We can link the lines up afterwards, but those tiles we can't build after we after we uh, put them in. So. Okay, temperature... Okay, we're getting a little too toasty over here, so it's time to take this offline. We don't want to overheat the plants we spent the entire playthrough trying to... Uh, trying to get working. Alright, I gotta go back to a one, guys. I gotta play slow and steady. That's my style, is slow and steady. I know we're trying to race through uh, an achievement here in the month. By the way, this is the monthly seed. If anybody would like to play along, uh, 
the seed is up in our Discord, so you can come and join us. Uh, you don't have to play on max difficulty. Uh, we definitely have the version of it without that up there. Eslin loves gaming. What's going on? Eslin, we started with a frozen planet, and uh, we are finally getting some temperature getting into our base so we can actually get off of things. Guys, let's do a shout-out for Eslin. How are you doing today? Eslin loves to game. Yeah. Um, not overheating, overheating, but we're dumping a lot of temperature directly into our water over here, and that might overheat these plants that are right close next to it. Uh, there's a few things we could do to take... Basically, we're heating up at our at the core of our base more than the outer extremities, so we got to manage that just a little bit. We're trying to stabilize, not go crazy. Yeah, and Eslin, we're on max difficulty. Uh, double hunger, double morale problems, double everything. Like, uh, basically everything is impossible. We've been we've been fighting to get calories the entire time. We we this is all the water we have currently. Uh, the only water source we have on the map is this cool slush geyser. So we've even been recycling the water from our toilets into this system. We're trying to melt all the ice on the map that's inside our base. Like, we have been on a razor's edge the whole time. You do so much for the... I'm okay. Been struggling health-wise, but doing much better this week. So probably popping my head in as I saw some Ani going on. Yeah! Uh, basically, you've gone insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, I'm a masochist. We stopped doing my... I had a long-term stream world that we hit about 400 hours in, and it finally decided it was time to retire it. Uh, that stream actually, or that world actually, we got someone through the tear and built a monument. And so it was nice to actually call that done. And I decided that what we're going to do is start streaming the monthly seed. In our community, we always put up a new seed at the beginning of the month. And since I haven't had time to actually play those too much, I thought it would be good to do those on stream. And everybody suggested setting a goal. So I kind of yes and myself into a uh, into a situation. Everyone was like, why don't you do this? Okay, yes. Why don't you do this? Ooh, yes. So I just kept saying yes until I wound up on a frozen forest planet with the goal of building a monument with no teleporters on max difficulty. Um, so yeah, insane is a good way to put it. I haven't played in ages since... ASA came out. I got hooked. Yeah, I Ark Survival Ascended is something I've like I've been on the fence about doing. I with having oh, like 7,000 hours into Ark, I'm kind of like okay, I'm going to stick with other stuff. Frozen Forest was your idea? I mean, it's a good it's a good playthrough. I'm enjoying it, but uh it might have been a little bit much to go with all of it all at once. But yeah, we're up to we're up to seven dupes as of uh, not too long ago. What do we got over here? 39 more cycles. I think... I think what I'd like to do... Is help this... Help this along just a little bit over here. Yes, Julie suggested the no teleporter part. You suggested the frozen forest. Julie suggested the monument. So yeah, you and Julie kind of uh, worked together to make my life a little insane. Hope you've been well. I got to go at sleep time, but I wanted to pop my head and say thank you so much. Yeah, I've been well. Um, working on getting towards a, uh, a surgery in December. I uh, met with my surgeon yesterday. Mixed mixed news, but you know, that's how it is, right? Well, our pips are hungry and starving because we don't have enough uh, tree stuff here. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to disable this building uh, because uh, our tame tips are probably going to die out. Of course, of course. Oh. Get a good stretch going here. Is that pip there? Not sure how a pip squeak got over there, but let's get him out of there. I probably accidentally swept an egg into there. See, my worry is that even like, yes, our heat is like kind of centralized over here, um, but we don't have forever on this hydrogen vent. And is the heat that's coming out in the next 39 cycles enough to warm up here and down here? Because um, that becomes the question, right? So we're going to have them build this loop in here and hopefully start helping to melt this ice. In fact... Ooh, printing pod. What do we got? What do we got? Spicy tofu. Piloting science construction. Small battle, bladder, irritable bowel, bottomless stomach. No. Spicy tofu it is. So, guys, I, uh, I'll i be going to the movie soon. Hopefully, I'll be back before stream is over. Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. Like I said, I might even be going late today. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, Googling, and what it seems like is that on Spaced Out, you can't get stuff until you discover it, or you get to cycle 500. So, if all else fails and we can't seem to get to space, what we could do is really, like, push what we can do on this planet, and then try to speed up and get to cycle 500, and then cross our fingers for a Dreco and some other materials to print out of the printing pod. Um, I'm not usually a luck-based player in any of the games I play, so that's not an optimal solution. But it is, uh, it is there in the back of my mind uh, as like, okay, we need this thing. Okay, so we need one of these bad boys. And I'm gonna do that to like minimize space, right? Wait a second. So that's gonna pick up ingredients. So these ingredients are gonna have to come from somewhere. That's not gonna go there, right? Right, I said for the time being we can put this here, right? And then this. 
is going to have to go there. Because that can't see that loader, but it can see... It will be able to see this once we break that tile. Okay. Okay. Let's do that, and then let's start running our conductive wire and figuring out how we're going to deal with that. So that's going to run there. It's going to run there. Those are on the left side, so this needs to run to there. That needs to run up to there. Uh, we're going to put that there. And then... That can run to there. We're going to have to delete that and that. Uh, we can eventually get rid of these. We don't need those tiles in space. Put that there for the sake of doing that. Uh, deconstruct that bad boy. Move that there. Let's make sure the food gets into the refrigerator faster than other things happen. Wait, they won't be able to reach this. So let's put that there. slowly but surely getting our kitchen on board. Okay, my marathon of job application is done for now. Good! Wel welcome into the madness. Uh, we are almost done getting a kitchen up, which is good because we're getting a little ahead on calories. Um... I'm cool with overproducing as long as we can deep freeze it. And our temperature is starting to look quite nice. Ah. I tried pressing the two button, by the way, Julie. Um, I gotta keep. I gotta keep going slow. Uh oh, what? Yeah, looking looking pretty green. Looking pretty green. Uh, we got a seventh dupe. We uh, we got a Nisbet so that we could give the give the name to Emily. And I think I think we're still waiting for one more dupe for the redemption. Linus wanted to name one after Sweetney. So we got the Emily Nisbet. We need the next dupe is Sweetney dupe. Yeah, Sweetney, I don't know if you're out there, but Linus was like, I want to name a dupe Sweetney. So uh, we'll be getting you that dupe. You'll be dupe number eight.
And I started, I started ranching the pips just a little bit too early. Uh, we didn't have these growing in enough. So, uh, the ones that are already tame are probably going to starve, but we do have a few wild eggs still, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sort that later. So I disabled the grooming station. Now, as far as power goes... I think we might just want to put the transformers over here for now for the uh, conductive wire for the kitchen, right? Like we snag a heavy watt joint plate, slap that bad boy in. Hmm. Slap that in right there. do for preemptive building yeah it's been a long journey to get to uh get to green but we are we are super green now you know what? why am i doing that let's not do it that way yeah I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, those lower priority though. I would definitely like to get this kitchen working. Like I always talk about in both Ani and RimWorld, the reason I try not to go too fast, like you guys saw, as soon as I hit that two button, things started to heat up in an uncontrol not an uncontrollable way, but a less controllable way. So I tend to I tend to like to play it slow and steady because we're here to have a good time. We don't we don't need to just annihilate progress. We we would like to actually Yeah, we're on super hard, we're on a frozen map, like we gotta we gotta keep an eye on things, you know? Can you, can you please wrangle the sage hatch? Oh, it's asleep, so it can't be wrangled at the moment. Okay. Yeah, stay slow. Oh, 
15 cycles till that comes online. Which is going to be like, it's going to be interesting because this comes out at negative 10 and then we can heat it up. So that's going to balance a little bit more. Instead of heating up the water that's going through our, uh, our base, which is coming back in at 19, going out at 22, getting a nine. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of like generally smearing it out over here. I mean, I'm glad that our stress hasn't really gotten above 51 to 52 percent. Like, I was real worried that we were going to start getting major stress reactions on this playthrough when I started, but... I'm not going to set filters till we actually get this stuff properly powered. Speaking of, we're going to snip that so those things aren't creating heat for no reason. I think we're getting some good systems in place, though. Slowly but surely, everything is starting to even out with the green. I think we'll be able to soak the rest of the heat from the next 37.8 cycles of the hydrogen. Uh, that should stable out our temperature, and then we can make any necessary adjustments going forward on that. Uh, like I said, we can kind of start stacking calories once we, uh, once we get this project finished over here. this come over to there. We might swap the entire base over to conductive wire at this point, but I'm not 100% sure. Because once we get the kitchen on a separate circuit, that's the vast majority of the power consumers that we're going to be using. Uh, so if we swap out the rest of the base for conductive wire, we could theoretically... Although these... Oof. Those can never be conductive wire. So we'll have to leave those on their own. Yeah, it's kind of our uh, power supply. It can stay on its own single regular wire. couple of more segments to get built. In fact, I think... This 
So we're going to dot build there, 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 and there. And then this is going to get deconstructed. We're going to put all the building stuff up to a priority of six on those. And this will be our kitchen. So for everybody out there who is wondering about how to do deep freezers and kitchens and all that stuff, um, this isn't necessarily the most efficient use of space. Uh, also, like, definitely not a high pop kitchen. But this is one way to do it. Um, I've been explaining as I go, but if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Happy to answer anything I can. Basically, we've got a spot for ingredients, and we've got a spot for um, finished foods. And what we're going to do is the dupes will put all the ingredients into this, uh, this loader here. And they'll get dropped into this spot, which will be frozen by this thermoregulator. The thermoregulator's heat will get added to our fluid cooling loop. And... Yeah. So that'll get moved to the main loop. Well, temperature regulation loop is what we should really be saying about all that. And can we start moving that, actually? Yeah, we could. So the thermal regulator is going to use a hydrogen loop, which is this loop here, to cool everything down to below 18 to negative 18, which is below freezing. We're gonna we can usually stabilize somewhere around negative 50. We've got it on the metal tiles to help conduct uh, cold. So this thing is going to pick up any ingredients here, add it to the grill, add it to the mushers here, and then any finished food it'll drop in this loader. The finished food will then follow the rails and get dropped in here. This can't see that, which is important. Uh, thank you for the stretch barb. Because if that, if this sweeper could see that loader in its, its uh, ability range, then we'd wind up with an infinite loop where that was pulling food out of the deep freeze and putting it into the loader over and over and over again. What this sweeper is going to do though, is it's gonna pull food out of the deep freezer and put it into these refrigerators. Now, you can run into a problem where your frozen food is not staying frozen if too much of it is in here, but if you go into your fridge, you can limit the amount that's in the fridge. So if you limit this to like maybe, I usually limit it to like three to five kilos, but with double hunger, maybe we'll limit it to 10 kilos. So one of these fridges will have 10 kilos of food in it. The rest of the food will stay in the deep freeze. Whenever the dupes come to eat, they'll grab, they'll grab food. The auto sweeper will replenish the refrigerator. Uh, that way everything stays frozen here that's finished food and everything stays frozen here that's ingredients. Zed's taking notes. I think Killer was interested in this system too, so. That brings all of that online, right? Now what we need to do is set priorities here. So this... Let's make this medicine. This one, let's take offline entirely. 
this one is not going to have cooking ingredients. Um, we're not going to have raw stuff in here. And this is going to get limited to 10 kilos. Right? This is going to be barbecue, hexalent, lice loaf, and... Mush fry, nutrient bar, omelet, pickled meal, spicy tofu. Okay. Doing these priorities is always a pain, right? So let's make sure we got these priorities right so people aren't starving. Because when Max hunger, this is going to be a pain in the ass, right? So we've got our refrigerator set. This refrigerator is on a 7. That's good. Down here, we're going to want... Down here, we're going to want ingredients. And that includes meal lice and mush bars and meat. All of that needs to get into the ingredient bit, right? This thing does not have meat. Raw egg. Pickled meal is fine. All right, so this has all the finished foods. This has all of the medicine. This is going to bring in all of our ingredients. Uh, this is going to allow manual use. Right? And it's a lower priority than the refrigerator. So they won't take stuff out of the refrigerator to put it in here. Right? This guy up here is going to be finished foods. On a five, we're also going to allow manual use. And it's going to stay at a five, so it's below the refrigerator. So if there's any finished foods that drop, like they drop it over here, or they wind up somewhere else in the base, the dupes will come along and put finished food in here. Uh, this will put it in there for when it gets comes out of this guy or these guys. Okay. Copy settings to there. And then we're going to drop these down. Actually, no. We'll leave those at a 7. Just in case we need to bring them back online. Can you do the mohawk tomorrow? I tried to do the mohawk today, but my hair is getting a little long. So the answer is, if I can cut my own hair tomorrow morning, I will put it up. But uh, I didn't want to stand up with the amount of hair that I've got going now. So time to... Uh, And this, uh, forever, forever, forever. Uh, we're actually going to put that on a six. This is on a seven. Same thing with this. Let's put that on a six. So they'll, they'll store things there before they'll deal with other storing stuff. Now we've got 52,000 calories, so if anything is wrong with those priorities, that's how long we have to get it right. the smiley face so bad. Yeah, me too. I would love to get a smiley face uh, shaved into the side of my head. That would be awesome. Okay, so they're lice loafing there.
Set that to zero for now. Actually, let's set it to negative 20. Good thing is you don't have to worry about the thermoregulator putting out heat. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're putting it onto our cooling loop, so going in at 17, coming out at 18 is fine. God, that's looking good. That might be one of the best looking temperature bases I've ever had in my life. I mean, that cold was freaking impossible, but... Oh, uh, we also... We need to get stuff out of here in theory. Let's not worry about that right now. What happened? Oh my god. Thank you, Barb. I could have sworn I did that. Thank you for thank you for catching that. Okay, so... And we are just going loop crazy over here. This is how I like to do my loops, kind of like wings off of the central area. And then if we need to move water up and down, we use the central line. Still a little messy at the moment, but we'll gradually make everything uh, nice and uh, nice and sorted out. Thirteen point nine cycles. See your plumbing. 
You'll have to you'll have to share your playthrough on the uh, in the community. Almost as tangled as your hair. Love it. He's inside the door, so he can't move. Ugh, hatches. Um, I mean, they're not low, but they're not... They're not super high, either. What do we got? Great Hall, Nature Reserve, Interested Skill, Washroom, Three Shift Break, Duplicant, Barracks. I mean, I suppose... Oh, yeah, Franz is new. That's why they haven't... Okay, so Franz gets improved carrying. Julie, I don't really want to put too much more into Julie. Julie might actually get skill scrubbed off of grilling. Uh, so we can put her into other things. She's basically researching and hauling, but we're going to have her help cook for a while. Actually, no, we could probably skill scrub Julie. Um... Linus, I don't want to put too much more into Linus because if we take any any dip in this, I want a nice little buffer. Sudsy, same thing. Don't want to put her into too much more. We could give her improved construction because it's free. Red, what's going on? We're gonna do a shout out for Red. How's your how's uh, how's your streams been going? Did you uh, did you do that marathon that you were doing? Yeah, Killer is pretty good on that. And Zed. I mean, we can give Zed hard digging because it's free. Okay, so all of our cat they've been going good. I only did nine hours because my internet just randomly stopped the stream. Yeah, I've had internet problems before, too. I actually found out that, uh, hey, guys, you remember how I had problems, and then I didn't have problems, and then I had problems again? Uh, I got a message from the regional manager guy that had come out, and he said that uh, there were actually some problems in the area that got sorted by the other wing of the company, like major infrastructure problems. So uh, I wasn't completely crazy. Okay, three hours in, or no, yeah, three hours in. We're about halfway through the normal stream time. We got them building a few more things. We got people sweeping up the map. Um, okay, let me look at my little list of things we got to get done. Deep freeze is done. Um, the pip thing is working. We researched the oxygen masks. Um, sage hatches are where they need to be. I've been watching the new Oppenheimer movie, 2023, in one hour. It's... In its three hours, it's an amazing movie. I've heard really good things. I actually, uh, 
I've heard a lot of people say good things about it. I haven't actually done it yet. Like I haven't gone to check it out yet, but it does look like a good, uh, like a good movie from what I what I can see. Um, I'm just kind of in awe right now, everybody, uh, is, is all I got to say. Um, this whole thing feels almost too good to be true. I, like, I feel like we're, we're getting stuff done. It's about the World War II and Nazi stuff on, and Hitler. Oh, interesting. One issue I have is that I brought all of this stuff together, and it can't work without each other, so... Let's draw this and see what, what, what else we can do here, right? Can't do that just yet. Missed a few bits. Namely that. Yeah, I've never been much of a history person, but... Uh, we I just watched Chernobyl with Barb, and that was really interesting. It's not a true story type of thing. It's one of those, like, based on a true story things. But definitely very interesting. So I would I would definitely be down to give Oppenheimer a watch. It's got Albert Einstein, Robert J. Oppenheimer. Interesting. Very cool. Printables. We could theoretically take on another dupe. Um, mouth breather, kitchen menace, creativity, agriculture, strength, germ resistance. Stream's going good, Red. Uh, we finished the long-term playthrough of RimWorld yesterday. We just finished getting up our proper kitchen in this playthrough. We're going to be doing uh, Ani today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Friday, we're going to be co-streaming with Julie, doing Stardew Valley for the third Friday in a row. And Saturday, we have been doing Minecraft on Saturdays. I'm going to talk to Squiddy because we did a co-stream and he wants to keep that going. Uh, I got a couple of ideas. I'm thinking we might do a pork chop farm uh, and decorate it on Saturday, unless we wind up coming up with something even better to do. Um, do we bring Devin on? Devin could be our artist. And then help with farming and hauling. And they'll have increased morale from kitchen stuff. I think we bring Devin on, guys. Tidying, farming, decorating. I think we do it. This is officially Sweetney, since uh, since Linus did a name redemption. All right, Sweetney, come on in. That's eight. Okay, let's get uh, let's get a schedule and priorities going. Uh, normally, I make a duplicate gym, someplace they can get their athletics up, but this place is so tiny. I feel like that just it's not it's not necessary. I mean, it would probably help a little bit, but 
Uh, priorities. Okay, you're going to decorate first, and then you're going to do cleaning, hauling, and tidying. Actually, let's have you do... Yeah, cleaning, hauling, tidying. You'll never do ranching. Um... I mean, we'd have to queue art, so... I'm actually tempted to put him into... You know what? Oh, that's right, that's right. We're also going to have him do a little farming if necessary, right? Okay. And so, do we put him into farming first to help with farming? Could just wait, though. I think we just wait on Devin... Uh, that way we can go straight into art when we need to, and we can kind of keep him uh, doing what we need him to do. Are we down to freezing in here? Sterile atmosphere, deep freeze. Excellent. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to, well, we're going to snip that. So that should help start to warm up down here. We're not going to put radiant pipes because we don't want to pull too much chill out of there because that'll work us in the opposite direction. Um, pretty happy with how this is going. 16, and by here it's down to... Okay, so not too much is coming out of there, but that will help start to move the heat around even more. <laughs> 35 cycles on our hydrogen, and 13 till we're up on our polluted water. So yeah, we got to come up with, uh, with the next project. And I'm looking at my list here. It's either Rad Research or Dash of Salt Vines. And I'm kind of feeling... Mm, the problem with Dash of Salt Vines is getting us into... Getting us into this environment down here without releasing chlorine gas. So I think Rad Research might be next up. So I think there's going to be just a little bit of uh, room reconfiguration here. Yeah, I think base reconfiguration is kind of our new game, right? Like, we've got, we've got some spaces we can use for a few things.
We could also work on some automation. We're up to 126 kilos per tile up here, so... A thousand kilos of hydrogen in our infinite storage. Uh, plus another 150, so... We're doing good on that front. Now, the slow and steady player in me is like, Ah, oh, nether, just relax. Let the, let the pip stuff come online. Let the map get swept up nicely. You know, just... Uh, but the the timer of getting this done this month that uh that's got me uh thinking is this dirt or ice i'm gonna have to uh dig that Now, I also considered the idea that even though we got to, uh, we've got to steam a chamber, we need steel for that. We've got 400 kilos leaving for movies. All right, have fun at the movies, Barb. I'll see you when you get back. Let's do that. Sudzy, welcome on in. How the heck are ya? We got a proper kitchen up and running, Suds. Thermal regulator, deep freezes, mush, uh, mushers for lice loaf, grill, refrigerators, auto sweepers. And uh, look at our temperatures. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, we've got eight dupes. We just brought on one more. Everybody's got a name, including you in, in here. And... Uh, we seem to be calorie positive, although we just brought that dupe on, so I'll have to see how much of that uh, stays true. But at least they're not going to go off now. Um, and I'm just seeing if we've got enough in our kitchen over here. Um... Uh, arbor trees are starting to come online, naturally planted, so they're going to take a while. Pips are doing their thing. Uh, I, I, got, I got a little ahead of myself grooming them and getting them tame because we don't have enough to feed them. So we're going to let them do their thing. We got to get the rest of the arbor trees online in here. And I got to double check how many pips they can support wild. I haven't done that math yet. I would love to get a central storage going. But that's not a top priority. Okay, so looking at our list. The pips, ethanol type thing, that's that's going. There's nothing we could do but just wait on that. Uh, rad research is achievable. This section is math, so let me move this section out of my way. Because that's not like a to-do list. That's just like math to keep handy. Uh, incubators for stone hatches. So, and, oh, and uh, evolution chamber. I think that should be a good one on the list as well. That way we can keep this place not so terrible. We could get the automation in for it. We could swap over to con uh, conductive wire for the whole base so we can get a little bit less uh, less transformer action going. decontamination chamber can be part of the dash assault vine farm which we need ethanol to get into unless we want to heat up that section of the map
So if we need to add heat somewhere, like if, if this place starts to go the other way and get toasty, we want that to start adding heat down here first so we can turn this into a, into a proper farm. Uh, also, we do have Weezwort and access to Phosphorite, so we could, in theory, use that as a, as a cooling system as well without having to, you know, for at least a little while, without having to deal with putting an aqua tuner down, although we're going to need an aqua tuner for a steam chamber to get into space with a steam rocket. A lot of things hanging on each other here. And I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, man, I just kind of want to just watch it, you know? I just kind of want to watch it and make sure it works, but we need to do things. I think getting Radbolt research is the way to go, so reconfiguration of the base is probably something we got to do. Because I'd like to get Radbolt research going up here because we're next to the crashed satellite. But then how are we going to do that? We can't flip them the other way. Maybe we should actually put... No, because there's that there. We may want to come out along here and put Radbolt research somewhere here so they have to walk through here, come up, and then the Radbolts won't shoot them. I think that might be what we do, and I think Radbolt research is a good next step. You still playing Timberborn Suds, or you moved on to something else? And how goes the uh, how goes the family life? Visiting your mom, awesome. This is kind of working out perfectly. Like, this stuff is coming down here at, like, 30 degrees, and then coming out of here at, like, 20 degrees, which is enough to keep this place look working good, uh, but also enough to start helping melt this ice down here, which is something we need. Okay, so water tank down here. Radbolt research up in this corner somewhere. Let the pip ranches run. I may try to... I might have to do the whole, like, make natural tiles the cheaty way. And put more pips down here or somewhere. Okay. No games this week. Ah, you know, not every week can be a gaming week, right? I'm kind of... And the good thing about Oppenheimer the movie is that it's a true story and the director has paid real attention to what actually happened and put it into the cinema. That's awesome. You gotta love when uh, when a director takes their work seriously when it comes to true storytelling. Okay, so the other thing to consider, guys, um, we're at eight dupes and we're calorie positive. At six, we had about seven hundred and ninety cycles worth of dirt. This pips will start getting us a little bit more dirt. So let's say we had eight hundred at six with another two probably down to about 600 cycles worth of dirt. We probably won't hit too high into that. Depending on how many pips we bring online, we might get even more. Okay. Hmm. I'd like to start coring the map out. I, th I think I think getting Radbolt research and starting to get some more digging going could be helpful because there is more ice around the map, which could add, which could help us keep our water going until this guy comes online, which isn't too far away anyway. Um, we've got eight, which is the max we're going to be able to handle with just one electrolyzer. So that is something to consider. We could, you know, what I'm going to put that on the list is we might want to do 
a legit electrolyzer. Right? We could do a submerged electrolyzer setup and we could get two or three electrolyzer. I can't, like I said earlier, I can't picture going more than eight dupes on this map. And we've got eight dupes. That being said, it's my birthday this month. It's on the 27th, which is a Monday. So I'll try to join and watch your stream. Awesome, Red. Happy birthday. If I don't see you then, happy birthday. Okay, guys, I know I keep talking in circles. And uh, those of you that are here often can probably guess why. Uh, I really need to take another restroom break. I hate taking them this frequently. Um, but I have been trying to work on bringing a lot more liquids in. Doctor says it's important to stay hydrated for all of my surgery and stomach things. So that's definitely been on my mind a lot. So I've been consciously trying to bring in more liquids. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is take that restroom break. And then I think, I think Radbolt research... Yeah, I think Radbolt research and digging out the map are going to be the next goals for the for the day. So I'm going to put up the Be Right Back screen. Again, guys, I do apologize for the frequency of the restroom breaks. I don't like taking this many, but uh, you got to listen to the body. Chronic health is something we're, uh, we're aware of here. So everybody uh, go check out Bobby if you like the music. I'll be right back. I'll try to make it a quick one. And uh, I can't apologize enough for uh, taking all this time. I'll be right back.
Okay, guys, I am back. And yeah, we got to have specific goals in mind here. So let's do a little bit of reconfiguring. We don't need these mushers up anymore. We've got two over here. And they're mushing like, uh, mushing like crazy people, right? So let's deconstruct these. Uh, the egg cracker. We've been manually doing egg cracking as we need to, right? Uh, I kind of feel like we don't need that at the moment. We're going to move over to meat. So I think the goals for the second half of stream here are Radbolt research setup uh, and evolution chamber. Um... We're going to put Radbolt Research over on this side. If we look at our radiation here, that's badass radiation, right? Uh, what we can do is kind of come around here, go up here. Now, that being said, medicine. Do we have an apothecary yet? Let's uh, let's research the apothecary. I want... Uh, I want... Uh, what do you call it? Rad pills. We're going to need rad pills if we're going to get onto radiation research, right? So my thought process is... Cause they can't get out here anyway, right? So let's say we do that there. And we do like... These things take a lot of energy, right? 480 watts. If we do conductive wire, we might be able to do two of them, right? I can't get that close, so we could put those there. The reflector would go there, right? And that would go there as our secondary one, right? And we've got sand up here, so we can grab some sand. That's excellent. i got to try and keep my back straight here. Um, so what we'd end up doing is having that like that, that like that. Right. Something like that. And then we would need to break off on some transformers. Yeah, we're going to need that apothecary for cuz just going out there is going to be a hard one. Research is complete. Can we put an apothecary in a ranch? Let's see if we can.
And they are keeping ahead of the meal lice. So let's get Julie scrubbed. Because Julie doesn't need grilling, so we could allocate those points somewhere else. Julie's going to help with hauling. Researching, hauling, then cooking. Cooking and farming. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, basic rad pills. One kilo. So if we did 10, it'd be 10 kilos. If we did 100, it'd be 100 kilos. 1,000 kilos is a ton. So let's just do a full... No, no, no. A full 99 of them. Uh, Priority-wise, where is Killer. Uh, let's get Killer. I think Killer can come off of cooking. We've got Zed and Emily cooking. They're cooking and farming, and then they would be supplying. Right. <sighs> now, the thought process that's going in my head is, do we wind up using this space over here for a second barracks? I don't think we need more than eight people. So my thought process then is this is probably where we should move our massage parlor. I don't think we should need more than two of those things, right? They're plugged into the main grid right now, though. Let's leave them where they are. Let's focus on the other things. We're going to get rad pills up. Um, mm. Now we come into the question, where are we going to put the evolution chamber? We could put the evolution chamber and the incubators right here, maybe. That's not a terrible idea, actually. Because our, our, all of our animals are here, right? And it's across from our kitchen. Hmm. This is pretty much going to stay here forever. Because we need that to guard against radiation coming down. So let's say we did put the evolution chamber here, right? Let's do a little math on that. Thank you. 
So we'd have one of those there. And we could just use regular tiles. Right? And then we could put one, two, three incubators there, which should be plenty for these guys. I'm not entirely convinced we could feed an infinite amount of sage hatches. So I don't even know that we're going to actually ranch them. We might just leave them wild in here. Two of them is a decent amount. We might get a few more here and there. Um, we'll leave it a ranch for now. I think this might be a reasonable way to do this. Now, for now, let's uh, let's get those off. So we'll build that. We'll get a shipping rail. God, we need yeah, we need to start coring out the map for resources, right? Put that there, there. This one's not going to get one just yet. Actually, that doesn't need to get one just yet either. Right? That would go up to there. Do that with a bottle emptier. We won't do that till our water comes online anyway, but we might as well get the infrastructure built for it. And I'd like to try and get our transformers into a more compact and reasonable place, right? I don't think we actually need that many batteries. I think putting in the extra batteries was overkill. And it's going to generate heat that we don't need. So let's pull those out of there, right? The idea of having industry in the base on the loop is so is so crazy to me. Like usually I'm trying to get a separate industrial area, but we just don't have the resources to really make that a viable option. I was trying to wait to get all of this at the same time, but we may very well have to uh, put in a temporary thing there.
Pump. Those are the words. Temporary pump to get this uh, this brine going. Although, how many cycles do we have? 10.5. I hate to do something that wastes time. But I think it might be necessary. Yeah, let's, uh, let's be safe here. Let's actually get that going. Devin's become quite the builder, so... I honestly think this is going to work out to be the perfect amount of heat, given how much uh, we've spread the heat around here. I think we may very well end up with a pretty much even temperatured base. I mean, even this stuff that's blue is barely blue. You know, we've got like 10 degree temperatures, not like negative 20, negative 30, so... We are going to wind up with a little bit of extra cold bleeding in in a couple of places, namely over here. We're going to wait till we get a few more rad, uh, rad pills. Um, actually, let's make sure they don't have rad pills on their list. Because we've been getting along fine with no rad pills. Uh, I would hate to waste the rad pills. Julie wound up scrubbed, so let's get Julie back to where she needs to be. Julie is our researcher, right? So boop, boop, boop. And is doing a second in hauling, so... We'll give her some tidying and... Plumbing. We could use a plumber. Excellent. Uh, Linus is doing the things they need to be doing. Sudsy, same deal. Sweetney. Uh, Sweetney's the one we brought on for art and other things. We're just going to let Sweetney run a little. Like, just, just do basic shit. Uh, once we get three points, we'll go into Masterworks and we'll, uh, we'll get them doing a little bit of art. Uh, Killer doesn't need anything else at the moment. And Zed... I don't think Zed needs anything more at the moment either. So what's going to wind up happening is we're going to get a lot of this stuff built out. And as we're building out and digging the map, we're going to wind up in a situation where we do have more cold coming in. So we'll be able to eat the heat of our industry and everything else. Food is in a nice place. Um, all right, over to my list. So we're getting the rad pill so we can do the rad research. We're putting in the infrastructure for the for the evolution chamber. We've got a printable. Let's see what we got. I mean, at this point, maybe if we've got a super badass dupe, but I'm still a little hesitant to bring any more dupes on. Let's get curative tablets. And another thing I'd like to do is start getting our power grids swapped out. Like, this is an obsolete line, right? So 
so yeah, like I was saying, we could put in transformers instead of uh, instead of batteries over here. I think that might be the play. We could put two up here to take care of our Radbolt research. And then we could put another two over here to go to our main base, leave one up here to deal with our power, uh, our pump and our, our liquid pump and our three hydrogen based pumps. Okay, so we need to actually delete this stuff, right? So one, two for Radbolt research. And then if we want to put, hang on a second, hang on a second. We could squeeze more in here. This is an awkward space. Let's. Let's be smart about this. No, I want to keep the floor conventions. Let's be stupid about it, right? We're going to do that. Let's say one for the pumps there. Because this can come over. That can grab that. The pumps, this can just go up to the pumps here on this line. That'll get rid of that one. Then we'll have this one. We need two for... We've got these over here. Oh man, it's 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 a mess, guys. It's an absolute mess. What we could do, we could get rid of this meal wood and put some up here. Hang on. Let's let's let them do the other things. Not that we have other things going, but. Okay, the water over here looks like we can put it on board. Okay, so that doesn't work like that because it needs to rotate the other way. So how do we add that to the line? Bridge on, I suppose? And then it'll fill in the random little gaps that come along. It'll take a long time to go on the line. But that's good because it's gonna in, it's gonna inject cold into the system. Okay, we're gonna get a few more things done. I am tempted to kind of, yeah, I think we should tighten up this line and put transformers up here. Because we could eventually move this meal wood, and then there could be transformers up there. There could be transformers here. If we fill in this gap here, like... If we fill this in like that... Hmm. 
Yeah, okay, let's do it. Bring that over to there. Actually, we don't need those to be airflow tiles. We can just use regular tiles. It would be a waste to use airflow. Um, and then we're going to leave a two there. So we could put those there. Okay. That's not working, because it's getting in the way. Hmm. Okay, we might have to set up a whole other thing for that. Uh, I need that. I need that sorted. Not a big fan of doing emergency building, but in this instance. that going. I think we're going to have to put up another, uh, another line, basically, which is fine. Just run pipes everywhere, guys. That's the lesson we've learned right here. Just run pipes everywhere. I mean, calories aren't doing terrible. I think we're I think we're reasonably stable. Um, like I said, I wouldn't mind being positive now that we have a deep freeze. So making rad pills, reallocating power transformers, shifting our, our stuff around. And trying to get this salt water back into the line. We turned this thing on because 
that salt water is going to need more heat. So we're going to need, when we're dropping the cold salt water in here, we're going to need to drop some more warm heat in there, some more warm water in there. So here we go again. Um, Linus can go back on operating. We'll take the building down. That way they work on the, uh, the, the refinery. We want them building top priority when we have mechatronics engineer stuff to do, but... If we don't have mechatronic stuff to build, Devin and everybody else can build. A few people have building as a secondary, and Killer is a fantastic builder. So Linus can Linus can do the refinery, get some heat back in there to offset the cold we're about to drop in from this brine that we're going to send up there. Removing the brine itself should also get some of this cold out of here, because the brine is negative 12. So the more cold we pull away from here, the quicker the rest of the ice is going to melt. We'll have to continue to move the pump down as we go. Uh, but these pipes are slightly helping us. Like, stuff's coming in here, 14, and coming out at, well, I guess it depends on whether the hydrogen vent's kicking or not. Just a non-stop balancing act between cold and hot. I think we can press the two button. We're reasonably stable here. Let's see if that works. We have it bridging on to the uh, toilet polluted line. So it should only put that stuff in after like after the fact. We got to watch the toilets is basically what I'm saying. Yes, excellent. So the polluted water comes through. If the polluted water can't get onto the lawn, or if the if there's no polluted water, the brine gets put on there. Excellent. Like I said, we'll put this on here for our pump system. And then I think I know how I want to deal with the conductive wire switchover, right? Uh, let's use... Oh, God, it's such a hard call. I guess we're just going to use iron.
this stuff is going to come over here. We're going to have to move these. It's it's one of those little uh, one-piece missing Tetris-y type puzzles, right? That can go. How many rad pills do we have? We've only made a few. They won't be able to reach most of that because it's up there. Hmm. Okay, so we'll need ladders. That's fine. Everything is fine. And we'll have to deconstruct these and move them anyway. That's that's the game we got to play. Problem is, is this thermal regulator is gonna get toasty real quick. Because we need water to be flowing through that, and it takes a lower priority to do that. Ah, it looks like there's enough coming through. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, some of these systems are a little janky, but they're working. Okay, so... I'm trying to keep uh, an explanation. I gotta be honest, guys. Yesterday kind of tired me out a bit, doing that nine and a half... Well, almost nine and a half hour stream of RimWorld. Love playing that game, but we went for a very long time to try and accomplish a few goals. Uh, absolutely worth it. Absolutely 100% worth it. But, uh, you know, you can't deny that sometimes that type of stuff gets you tired. So what we're going to do is, if we look at our power grid, right, the only thing on this grid at the moment, other than our pumps up here, are these two bits down here that we don't need permanently. So we can get rid of those and delete most of this line up to here, right? That'll allow us to switch these over to these transformers just by connecting that. I'd like that to come up the center here. Not necessary, but if it comes up the center, then we can get another tile out of here and add another transformer, I think. Yeah. So that's the goal there. And then... If we have to add another transformer. I'm not sure we will. And that'll be that'll mean that this transformer will be able to switch over to just dealing with this. We'll be able to delete this transformer, maybe clean those wires up just a touch. Uh, doesn't really matter. These two will go over to our setup over here. Uh, a little little ugly. Let's fix that. We'll do that, right? That'll be fine. I think we've got some ice up here that's still melting, which is why this is happening. Oh, element damage. Ah, that was the problem.
that's a problem. Yep, that 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 mistake cost us a little bit. Okay. Um Thirty kilos. That's gonna take forever. We're gonna have to deconstruct this and rebuild it. Ah, uh, okay. That's gonna be a whole thing. No, let's not do that. Um... That's water, so we're not going to do that. This is going to mess with our stuff real quick. Gotta breathe. I'm not breathing. That's a problem. Alright, killer's on it. Well, theoretically. Mm. Killer, come on. Alright, we emergency build that, because that's our air supply, essentially. Would have thought building one of these things would take so long. I think it's because Julie's building it. Please build a little bit faster. Here comes Killer. Killer can actually build. There we go. You just destroyed the Way Queen? Okay. Air is being generated again. That was, that was fucked up. I don't know how long that was happening, but we almost suffocated. Yay for stupid mistakes. That's what happens when you put brine onto your line.
And that's going to have repercussions across the board. War Queen, excellent. Yeah, War Queens, War Queens can be quite the pain in the ass. I had to deal with a couple of them uh, yesterday while we were doing that playthrough. So the issue with what just happened there is we had Brian Ice going into, uh... We had Brian Ice going in and breaking our Electrolyzer, which means that our breathability is in the shitter right now. It should sort itself out reasonably quickly. Uh, and we're not choking to death, we're not suffocating at the moment, but that sucked. Um, and now that we have it up again, and we dealt with that problem, we gotta wait for our buffer tank to refill which means that the water is not flowing through onto the loop because our supply, our air supply and our cooling loop are all interconnected now. Uh, which means we can't put the brine ice in to be, to be turned into regular water because we need the brine ice to be heated up by the heat that's output by the refinery, which comes after the buffer tank for our air. So yeah, a couple of problems happened there. Every time I try to go faster, right, guys? Too easy? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I find annoying about them, really, is that they've got kind of a long shooting distance, and they'll keep putting out those uh, those obnoxious little uh, drones that they have. I mean, the drones are pretty easy to kill, but... Okay, in the meantime, we've got our power project still going, right? I mean, gotta keep the other projects going. I think we can kill these lines and then bring those back online after the fact. So let's do that. Well, I felt smart for a few minutes there, guys. I was like, oh yeah, we got this. We're gonna get more water in, we're gonna get some more heat in, we're gonna get a few things done. Excellent, excellent. And uh, one mistake sets us back a little bit. We will keep working on the build project for our power because I'd like to get that going. Which is essentially gonna come up to there. And that's going to come down to there. And it's all linked together, right? I mean, our tank's not looking too bad. We're getting a little bit more in there. Plus, the brine going through is giving us salt, which they're crushing up here, which is giving us sand. Sand for filtration medium, so we can filter out our polluted water. So, you know, uh, minus that mistake, we had a few good things happen. Ooh, 
Once that buffer tank fills back up, our base will go back to being reasonably stable. God, I really am loving this playthrough. It's just a really nice challenge. So anyway, guys, if anybody has any questions or ideas or comments, wants to tell any stories or dad jokes, I'm here for it. You know, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different stuff. I've been looking at uh, different games that I might want to play. We've got We've got Portal in the possible mix. Um, would love to do a playthrough of the Myst series. Um, God, there's a bunch on the wish list as well. So that stuff usually falls in the category of Saturdays, but it looks like Saturdays may wind up being a regular stream of uh, co-stream with Squiddy doing stuff on the Minecraft server, which... Oh, barbecue. Do I even look at anybody? Yokel, allergies, undigging. Nope, let's get the barbecue. So we'll see how all of that goes. Uh, maybe Friday we'll wind up going back to being casual Friday after Julie and I finish our co-stream of Stardew Valley. And even on that, I'm not sure how long that's going to go. We plan on going through the end of the month, but that should get us through a year of Stardew. Uh, year of Stardew puts us uh, into the second and third year where Julie says that all of the good endgame stuff starts happening. So if that's the case, uh, then all of that might get extended a bit longer. Now, if I do this, and then do that. Then that should be working, and we can delete this guy. Yeah, flawless swap. Um, what we do need to do is get these out of here so that we can switch that line around, because they're on the main line, right? I think for now we're going to stick these guys over here. They rarely get used. And we're going to do that. In fact, we're going to do that. And then we're going to bring this over here. We're going to... I want to make sure that these go online reasonably quickly. Um, I, we're, we're at 41% stress. The, the the massage tables have come in very handy. So I don't want to... I want to be... I don't want to be like, alright, we're getting rid of these in this line. And then while they're building, the other ones hit stress. So... Our air buffer is almost ready. Our thermal regulator is getting toasty, which is a problem, but I think we should be fine. Uh, we're going to go to at least 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to start taking the stance of going as late as we need to, which is generally what I do anyway. We go until we finish whatever project we need to finish. But I think I'm going to embrace that even more so, because I like the idea of just going until we get things done, you know?
And again, I would love to press that, that two button or that three button. Last time I did that, though, I fucked everything up, and we are now in a position where we're trying to restabilize, so... Breathability is going to gradually start coming online, but gradually is the key phrase there. I think... Using a lot of airflow tiles. That heat isn't going to dissipate until we've finished uh, filling up this thing and allowing that stuff to rotate. But yeah. It's been a good week so far, and it's only Tuesday, guys. Ah, Sweetney, doing the... Hey, Sweetney, I don't know if you know this, but Linus redeemed a name a dupe and chose your name, so you are officially in the game. All right, we'll go a little bit faster here. Oh boy. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. Linus has been uh, been my best friend for more uh, more than half my life at this point. Yeah, so I'm uh I'm trying to stay talkative everybody. Like I said, uh, if I'm honest with myself, that extra long stream yesterday tired me out. So that's in contra direct contradiction to my saying I want to go until we're done during streams because it's like, oh man, if I go till we're done done, then we go over six hours and then I get tired. But I think it's going to take a little bit of uh, time before we find a proper balance on that. Like, I want to make sure that we're not in the middle of any projects and we're not ending early. So that might mean going late some days. But I also want to make sure that I give myself enough time to sleep so that I'm not sleepy on streams. Because inactive streams are not okay either. Uh, we've got we've got eight dupes now, and our stress has been under 50% for a while. So I feel like we're making good progress. So that gets a lot of that going, right? Now, there are some systems here that are essential that we don't bring offline. So I want to replace these branches with conductive wire. So, like... We're going to do that. These aren't used all the time. Mm. 
That's got to go off because I need water rotating as soon as this thing gets full. In fact, we're going to snip that for just a second and let some of this water rotate a bit. Buffering things left and right. Prioritizing buffering the systems we need is great until you screw up the systems you need and then nothing that needs the heat after or heat or cold after works, you know? All right, so now we should have stuff rotating through, which means that once it gets down here, we should start cooling on this thermal regulator a little bit, which is absolutely essential because it's getting up to 52, 53 degrees. Once it hits 75, it'll overheat, which is not good. And that's the thing about these colony builders. One little mistake can set you back hours of gameplay. Maybe not hours, but sometimes. So we got to run this like this until the thermal regulator goes down in temp, and then we'll rehook up the buffer tank. We've got plenty of water in the tank for now. I mean, we were microing the hell out of it when we did this play when we started this playthrough. So, you know, a little bit more isn't going to kill us uh, with the micro. Uh, our calories are still going up, and everything is frozen, which is why we need to focus on getting this thing cooled down. And there we go. Just like that, the temperature drops down to almost almost. Not nothing, but exactly what it, we need it to be. So then, let's uh, let's bring that back online. Uh, and once that tank finishes, we'll let it circulate a little bit more for the same reason. Then we'll turn our refinery back on. Then we'll bring in our cold brine water, and we can go back to being water positive on that. Uh, we've got five cycles, five and a half cycles, till this thing comes on. Then that can take over filling the metal refinery. If you'd have told me that I'd be dumping hydrogen into my base directly when I first started playing this game, I'd have been like, you're out of your mind. 500 degree hydrogen? How do you even do that? Like, that that would just scald the fuck out of your dupes. And it's like, yeah, but... Change Sweetney to Linus. Oh, I see where this is going. We already have a Linus, though, Sweetney. Like he already named a dupe. So so is it is it Linus two? That might get a little confusing. Here, I'll refund your points then. Yeah, uh, our character list is almost Emily, Franz, Julie Pixels, Linus, Sudsy, Sweetney, the Killer, and Zed. You might uh, you might recognize uh, some or all of those names realistically. Okay, so now we can we can hook those up. 
And... How are we going to do this? I think the answer is we've got to run this through here first. Because that'll give us the minimum amount of BS to deal with, right? And we can even do that. Yeah. You're just trying to be nice? Yeah, but you guys are all very nice. We're going to take the Rock Crusher offline temporarily. Our, sta our sand has been pretty stable, so... That's pretty awesome. Pressure is not good there. Oh, God. If we do ever get slicksters, we got a nice pile of carbon dioxide at the bottom of here. I would like to move the, uh... <sighs> carbon skimmer, but that becomes a whole thing in and of itself, so... Tying and untying knots all day long. Now we've got water rotating. We can go back to making aluminum ore. Which means we can go back to bringing in the cold brine. Okay, so now we got water going into place. At one point this stuff is gonna gonna melt, but I mean, at least we got the kitchen going. I mean, to get the kitchen up and running is great. We've got a little over an hour left in the normal time that I stream. Uh, if we could, in theory, get up the... Um, the Radbolt research, I'd be pretty stoked. Um, we are going to snip that because I need water rotating and I'm about to turn this pump off for a second. Legendary Devil Strand Duster? That shit's awesome.
Yeah, no, that is badass. That's a phenomenal thing to craft. Are you using a uh, crafting specialist? Or did you get that just uh, just out of luck? Inspiration. Yeah, inspirations are awesome. Alright, I need to... Make sure that air comes into the base area more. Of course, Killer's making medicine when I need him building. Go build, Killer. Or not. Okay, so then we can turn that back on. And that can get deleted. I mean, switching the base over to a more organized power system, I'll take that as a win. Printing pod. Not a bad one on Frankie, but I just don't want to take anybody on. We've got the calories, but the air becomes an issue. So we'll take the briar seeds, I suppose. Decor is something we can eventually start working on, but... Okay, so now how are we going to deal with our power situation? Because I want this thing gone. Okay, so what's next? How do we... How, okay, I think... This can go. Uh, that's not really pumping much of anything anyway. This stuff can't really be taken offline for too long. We kind of got to take it offline. I'm going to emergency build that stuff. Get the whole crew doing it. Normally don't like to do that, but when you're swapping a critical system...
Excellent. Bloop, bloop, blub, blub. All right, now the base is nicely green, and we're not really in need of injecting power from this guy. Uh, but as soon as this comes back online, we will start doing that, because coming out at negative and then getting processed, it'll only be up to like 15, 16 degrees anyway. Uh, we need that. Um, down here, what we can do is move this pump. The Apocriton, excellent. That's always a good time. Uh, Wick was fighting the Apocriton on his stream earlier. That can get added onto there. That shouldn't cause any problems, no. Okay, so then we can delete this this and that and we can get rid of that and the joint plate okay so what we wound up doing today is a lot of cleanup and I still think we can get our Radbolt research at least built. I don't know about actually researching. And it's going to take forever for our gases to get back on board. See, the big thing was that while the hydrogen vent was offline, we got a lot of we got a lot of oxygen circulation. The problem right now is that it's online and I don't want to block it off because we need all of that hydrogen for power. When it goes dormant, uh, we need as much banked in our storage as possible. So right now... Right now, we just got to deal with it. It's kind of breathable. Some oxygen is starting to circulate a little bit, but... Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. Whole base is almost green. Still a little chilly over here, but All right, we got a couple of people on the massage table. We got people idle. Lost two tunnelers. Yikes. Oof. 
Okay, so right now we're ahead of our work. I mean, first world problems and all, right? All right, everybody get to organizing then, I suppose. Oh, I see what we can do. Those can get built. That can go there, and we can put a scrubber back in. Not that we need it right this second. Let's check in on our skills from our new dupes. I guess we could theoretically... Let's research large sculptures so that when we get to that point, we can actually do a thing. Actually, actually, yeah. We took that offline because of the heat, not because of what it's doing. How much do we have on this? 25.8 cycles. Base might start getting warm soon. degrees over here. Hmm. Are we ready to start letting them do the rad bolt research? I think we are. This is going to this is going to bleed in a little bit of cold over here, but I think if we also go in here and do some radiant pipes. Hey killer. Well, you're Raiden. Thank you, Killer. Let's do a shout-out for Killer. Thank you for Raiden in, Killer. Uh, were you back on the rim today, or are you still doing Ani? We're, uh, we're slowly but surely getting some stuff done over here, but very slowly. Made a couple of mistakes that set us back some time. Uh, we are gradually getting things uh, up and running, but it's... Uh, it's been a thing. It's very much been a thing. What uh, what are you doing on the rim? You finally doing a vanilla playthrough, or are you still doing the modded stuff? What storyteller? Do do tell. What are you what are you up to? Yeah, I think we got to get a proper electrolyzer set up going and get it on the cooling loop. Vampire start modded Randy 500%. Excellent. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to doing a new start on RimWorld. I'm not sure when I'm going to start it, either when the new DLC comes out or probably after my surgery. I'd like to get it started soon, but I want to focus on this playthrough on Ani, and I'd like to, you know, I want to make sure I give it what it needs type of thing. 
Like, I don't want to start before the surgery and then end up in a situation where I have to stop for, like, two weeks before I can get back into it, you know? I lost one point to the plague and the one lost to a prison break. Ooh. Yeah, prison breaks can be pretty brutal. Oh, killer. This is, uh, this is the fridge setup I was talking about. There's a lot of ways to do a variation on it. But if you look at the temperature, it's negative 40 in here. And that's because we've got this hydrogen loop flowing. And hydrogen can get colder than water, so we've got it set to negative 40. Then the cooling loop from the water is coming through and pulling the heat out of the thermal regulator. And what we do is, since these can see through corners... We've got finished foods here and uh, ingredients here. This one will pull the ingredients out and put them in the grill and in here. And then it'll put finished food in here, which will ship it down to the finished food. Any ingredients will get dropped in here by the dupes to be put into the ingredient area. And then this will take finished food out of here and put it into the refrigerator, but only put 10 kilos in there so that there's not a lot that can spoil. So I hope that makes sense. I can help you do it. Uh, or show you the layout, but these are the basic things you need. You just need to set a few priorities, like the fridge has to be a higher priority than this or this, otherwise the dupes will take stuff out of the fridge and put it in there. And this thing that sees the finished food, it can't see this loader, otherwise it'll loop, loop in circles as well. So it's a little awkward to get the priorities far, but could you show me the layout? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. So Depending on the size of the kitchen and everything, we only need the two mushers and the one grill for this. But loop-wise, like, this is all part of a cooling loop. All this stuff you see, none of this is necessary for, like, running the kitchen. But you definitely need radiant pipes to take the heat away from the thermoregulator. Uh, the thermoregulator just loops this hydrogen around. It's, it's like an aqua tuner, but for hydrogen. And with the automation, you just have it set up with a gas pipe element sensor on the pipe. And say if it's above negative 40 to kick on and then it'll cool down the hydrogen and dump the heat into the room. Which is why you need the pipes because these come in and take the temperature into the water and then bring that back to our to our other area. Um, how you do cooling at that point is a whole thing. Our, we started on a frozen base so we're more concerned with upping the temperature. So this actually helps us up the temperature in the rest of our base. Uh, and then, like I said, the shipping rails. Um, the dupes drop the ingredients here at a priority of six. They get put here. This thing then takes ingredients through the corner and puts them in here and here. And the reason we do that is so that we can trap hydrogen or carbon dioxide in here, which allows us to keep this sterile. So if you put oxygen or polluted oxygen there, it'll still spoil even though it's frozen. Um... And so these will grab through the corners, and that will pull the ingredients out and fill these things. Uh, when these things drop, like the mushers or the grill drops finished food, the finished food will get put in here at a priority of six, just like this. We're allowing manual use on both of these so the dupes can make access, get access to them. Uh, but this will sweep the finished food like it just did there. And then that will ship that into this spot. This can't see the finished food, because if it could see this finished food, then it would just pull it, put it in there, pull it, put it in there over and over and over again. This, however, can see that and pulls it out and puts it in the refrigerator in small amounts. That way there's not a lot in there that can can rot. I've got it on 10 kilos, but usually I have it set on like three to five. Um, and then this can't see this for the same reason, so it doesn't get into an infinite loop. The refrigerator is set at a higher priority. It's set at a seven compared to this or this, because if you have the refrigerator at a lower priority, the dupes will get in a loop. If you, the fridge was on a five, they would take food out of there, put it in there, 
then this would put it in there. The sweeper would pull it out of there, put it in the fridge. The dupes would pull it out of the fridge. So priorities are there to keep it from looping. But that is, that is the principle of how all that works. It does require automation and some priority management, so... Where is the sweeper in the research? Um, I don't have a sweeper. The research lab is this room here. Just this room. There's no need to have a sweeper there. Uh, th there is another one over here that I'm working on doing something for the ranches. These can actually be knocked down to a six. Now, they still will sometimes deliver the meal lice, but... And right now, our uh, our main problem is that we're going to start swapping the problem over to, to needing to cool stuff. Uh, we need to let this hydrogen vent go for another 25 cycles. So that's why I'm, like, not worried about cracking open some of these bits and digging around. In fact, we're going to probably do more of that as we go. Oh shit, I fucked this up real quick. Build that next. That way I can control their ins and outs with that door so we don't get people irradiated unnecessarily. I actually do want them to dig out this sand. That could be very useful. We've got some sand, but I'd like to get more online. And we do need this crusher working, so we'll queue up some more wires. Our base is looking a lot cleaner now. Wires, pipes, everything. The one thing that's uh, not so clean is our air, but as soon as the hydrogen vent goes offline, that should get a little bit more breathable. I mean, this is a drastic improvement over what it previous, previously was.
Yeah, we might have to start opening up some of this insulated tile and letting some of the cold back in. I know that sounds insane given how much we've been trying to heat up the base, but we are now calorie positive. So even if it took our crops offline a little bit, we could definitely use a little bit more cold in here. Well, we could snag it off the bottom here, right? Do we have an auto dropper yet? We do. How are our skills doing? All right, Sweetney needs a little bit more experience. Uh, yeah, all the all the eight dupes that we have have been uh, have been named. Thank you guys for hanging out long enough to get all those points and uh, do that. I really appreciate it. You do what, Sweetney? So at 8, we have 16,032. We've got about four cycles of food. Yeah. I do need more experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Your dupe does. Uh, right. You're, you're our artist, and you've only got two points, and I don't want you doing art until you can do masterworks. So... can do no critter eggs. Okay, I don't even remember what we were researching. Oh, the large statues. Yes, killer. All eight of the dupes have names. We finally caught up. We got a Nisbet for Emily, and we got a... Uh, Linus had already redeemed uh, one for naming a dupe Sweetney the last time he was in. So all eight of the dupes are currently named. I'm not planning on taking anybody else on anytime soon. Uh, at 2,000 calories per mouth to feed, it, uh, it gets a little intense. Laz, running a 30-second ad. Thank you so much, Laz. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, we have the redemption for running a commercial. Uh, I get a very small piece of ad revenue whenever we do. So if you guys, uh, but I don't like to keep them on as default. So if you guys want to run them just to help me out, uh, there is a point redemption for that. So I'm going to run one for Laz. If you guys have seen a pre-roll or, uh, or if you're subscribed, you won't see an ad. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you guys back here in a couple of moments. And I appreciate you guys helping uh Get me a little bit of something. Uh, 
monetary support is never required, but always appreciated because I can't really work a normal job at the moment with my health. So I'll see everybody in just a few moments, but I am going to continue playing through. You're not going to miss anything. We're just on maintenance mode, essentially. Okay, so let's let's get this uh, let's get this rolling a little bit. I mean, we are getting a little bit better with oxygen. Expert on Ani. Absolutely. All right, what I think we're going to do, just to try and balance this out a little bit, we're going to do one of those. Priority six on that. And then at a regular priority, we're going to deconstruct these. The idea being that we will use the cold over here to balance the heat. I really don't want to have to close the hydrogen vent, so I'd rather start letting letting cold back in. Uh, but we are at the point where if we don't let some cold back in, we might end up in a situation where we're getting a little too hot. Too cold, too hot, too cold, too hot. I'm taking the glass. I'm not even going to look at anybody else. I just, I can't, I can't take on more dupes right now. I would have to do, I would have to add another electrolyzer. That's a lot of heat and that's also extra water that's got to go through. I think we're right on the brink right now as far as like what we can and can't do. I mean, this is going to get us some more water, but. Fact. Why don't we deconstruct that and deconstruct that as well? This goes back to my desire to strip mine the map as well. Yeah, let's start doing this a little bit on all the sides so we can start strip mining the map for materials. It's time to start playing the uh, balance the temperature game a little bit.
Okay, so yeah, guys, we're going to be doing this again tomorrow and Thursday. With any luck, we'll actually be able to make some good progress. Uh, we finally got our base green. So now we just got to balance the, the cold and the hot until the hydrogen vent goes offline. Uh, and we're going to start working on strip mining the map as well as doing a few other things on here. So we got our freezer up. What did I, what was the title today? Deep freezer and ranching, hopefully. Uh, ranching is going all right. The pips are actually, our, our arbor trees are going to take forever to grow. But we've got wild pips over there. I really should have just left them wild. Realistically, but, you know. It'll be fine. kind of want to do is that the reason I'm digging out on this side and letting cold in is that this side goes up to our hot stuff and then comes back around. So everything that needs warming up is on this side. And then everything that needs cooling down is uh, on up top. And then this needs to be warmed back up again. So doing a little bit of a balancing act here. As I've said many times, we will probably end up extending these outward a little bit as well. And once we've cleared enough hydrogen that we're not losing any to uh, these pockets over here, we'll start digging out these ways as well. So tomorrow... We'll get a few of the other goals sorted. Our goals are to get these uh, these pips running way better than they actually are. Uh, in theory, to get so ourselves some ethanol. Uh, our rad research is in the process. Uh, we're pr we might get that finished getting up today, but highly unlikely at this point. Um, you know what? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set that like that, and I'm only going to let killer in and out. And then I'm going to go up and, uh, that way we can let Killer do, do his thing over there. This atmosphere thing is going to be a problem, which is why I want to do this over here. I mean, in theory, I guess I could put a gas pump down here to pump the hydrogen up, but more power being consumed. Uh, no, the, um, the hydrogen is getting a little bit too much for the plants down here. Uh, made a mistake, and the breathability went down a little bit. So we're trying to get our breathability back up, but our lower mealwood is having problems staying at the right atmosphere. Which isn't the worst problem in the world, but uh, making a few adjustments to make it better now. Just trying to get a little bit better airflow over here so the hydrogen can go up. But Zed, check it out. Look at our temperatures. We're at the point now where we're cracking open some of the insulated tiles to like bring some cold back in for balancing sake. As well as working on getting our radiation research up and going.
Yeah, it's uh, it's going nicely. The uh, not having a lot of air to breathe thing is starting to get to them, but that should sort itself out. Calories are doing okay. We're up to eight dupes, which means 16,000 calories a day. We've got about four cycles of food. We've got an automated th uh, situation set up for our kitchen over here. Could have done this a little cleaner, but it'll do. And our arbor trees are uh, slowly but surely uh, coming together here. Is this coming back online? Point two cycles. Excellent. Thank you for doing the shout out, Killer. Zed, uh, Zed's been in here for a little while, but thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so tomorrow's basic goal, guys, is to start strip mining the map. Uh, we've got enough heat injected into the base now that we can start doing that. I mean, it's looking good in here. Yeah, guys, if I ever forget to do a shout-out, feel free to, uh, to do that for me. Uh, the exclamation mark SO is open. The official one for Twitch only works if you're a moderator because of the way Twitch works, but the exclamation mark one is set up through Nightbot, so anybody can do it. Okay, skill-wise, Sweetney is still not quite at the level that we need him to be to do artwork. Air-wise, surprisingly, we're actually doing a little bit better, but... Yeah, that should help all of that rise upward. And that should get our meal wood back online. One uh, one chaotic moment after another here. Okay, this guy is up and running again. Okay. Looking forward to getting some automation in this space. 
And getting a little bit of elbow room. Okay, guys, we got about a half hour left. We've been going slow and steady. I'm going to continue the slow and steady uh, wins the race status. And we're just going to we're just going to keep an eye on everything. These really do need to come back online, but some of them, as you can see, are starting to pop up again because we opened up this area for, uh, for stuff to flow upward, so we're doing okay. More and more of this brine ice is melting down here. Uh, we've got auto droppers, auto dispensers down over here, so all of our sweeps should happen as we need them to. Uh, even put in some radiant pipes over there, because since we're dropping all of our cold stuff there, uh, the radiant pipes can suck up some of the chill. At one point or another, Devin will start working on getting the, uh... Hmm. I'm going to put a six on these guys, and we're going to get Devin to get our radio... If we can get our radioactive research up and running, or at least in the position to be up and running, uh, we're not going to be able to do too much research until we get more water into our lives anyway. Um, this thing is bringing in more water, so that's important. Um, our toilets are positive, and we're digging outwards, so any ice we find, we're going to get in here as well. Uh, we need to get some more water-positive processes going. That's the whole reason I wanted to get the pip ranches online, is because if we can start getting a bit of lumber... I mean, right now it's a dirt-positive process. They're eating the wild arbor trees and getting us dirt. Um... That's a whole thing, though. I may do some math after stream. Like, just leave it paused and do some math and double-check myself, because I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned about the dirt as far as it's going down. Uh, we got a couple of hatches, uh, sage hatches, eating the polluted dirt to give us coal, because we don't have a lot of coal on the map, so I figured polluted dirt going to that would be good. Um, we can get ourselves more polluted dirt by opening up that oxygen vent over there. Now, that might be a plan to get more off of water. So we've got water being electrolyzed, right? But we might be able to... We might be able to set up an infinite oxygen setup, similar to our infinite hydrogen setup here. What we could do is kind of make an air and clay factory over here. And then we won't have to do as much with the electrolyzer. Uh, we could do like a proper submerged electrolyzer setup and um, bridge that onto or check pressure, uh, whatever the case may be. Yeah, we could we could do a proper submerged electrolyzer setup, bridge that onto our oxygen line and take a primary oxygen out of the out of the polluted oxygen vent. I think that might be another thing we can add to the list. I think that's going to... We, we got to conserve water, right? Yeah, using that for using the polluted oxygen vent for air. That's one of the things I would do different if I had this playthrough to like if I started this playthrough over, I'd go in that direction a lot sooner. But I think that's a good direction to go in because uh, that'll stop us from leaning so hard on. Um, it'll stop us from leaning so hard on our electrolyzer. 
which means our water will have will be a lot less stressed about getting water because making water is not the easiest thing I don't think the dupes using the bathroom is water positive enough to make up for the amount of water they're consuming to make the air that they're breathing, so... Yeah, after we cracked that hole open, our, uh, our meal wood down here is more online. That's good, because that needs to be. This is our main farm down here. We can always move a few things around, but... Our stress tends to go up when we have a lot of work queued up. You know, not really a uh, surprise there, but... Okay, the other thing is... We will need to... We will need to plug this hole. Oh, we can't. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Alright, let's... change this up just a little bit. That just occurred to me. We can't let atmosphere just be venting out, right? Some of this hydrogen is actually going to get up here, is the problem. Well, not the problem, but one of the problems. We may at one point have to put a pump up here to get the hydrogen back into the system. Because uh, our researcher is going to need to breathe when they're over there researching, right? Switch over to iron from aluminum. We've got enough aluminum on deck. We need to get more iron going. Um, we got people stressed, so I don't. I don't blame them. I did screw up the air, so they're not getting a lot of uh, not getting a lot of breathable air at the moment. So uh, that's going to continue to be a problem until this thing goes offline in 22 cycles. Yeah, we're going to have to make use of this polluted oxygen vent. Which also brings us back to the dash of salt vines, right? Like, we need sand to filter out oxygen. And if we need sand to filter out oxygen, we need to be able to make sand. We've got 39 tons, which is going to last us a little while with what we're doing. But if we start running a whole bunch of deodorizers... It's not gonna. It's not gonna last that long. So that means we need to be producing sand either by crushing rocks or by crushing salt. So, yeah, a lot of lot of systems integrated here. Uh, this could easily be a playthrough we play like for a very long time. 
but... We're gonna, we're gonna play it for a month, and then we're gonna be done. Can store a hundred. So we're going to put these on about 60. And then with the loss of flowing through, plus the both of them. <clears throat> and we need the Radbolt research. Essentially because um, we need to get space to get plastic to get the things done we need to get done. So we can turn that on. No, you know what? Not yet. Not yet. Because um, that'll just eat power and we don't have the water to do the advanced research. And the water to do the advanced research is going to be a tax on our system. That's the thing about Ani, is everything is a balancing act. Alright, I gotta... I'm gonna snip that so the central spot on the base actually gets the oxygen injection because we gotta we gotta get the stress level down and the stress level is coming from oxygen problems. It's almost like opening a hydrogen vent directly into your core base was a bad idea. Almost. Oh, 16,000 calories a day is a lot of calories, everybody. We are getting the water from up here pumped into our system, going through the refinery so that it heats it up a little bit so that it doesn't break the pipes. Honestly, we could probably pump it straight in. Do we need to heat up the refinery water? Hmm. Would injecting negative 10 degree water over here be the worst thing in small amounts?
I don't know that it would. It's very small amounts. Hmm. Yeah, let's start bringing it in cold. It doesn't need to go into this system. Let's, uh... Let's bring it, let's bring it in there. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Um... We'll do that. And this guy. What do we got? Aluminum. I think, we, yeah, we, we don't we don't have this uh, the infrastructure for more dupes now. I'm not going to chase it. Could have been natural gas. I honestly wouldn't mind some natural gas at this point, Zed. Uh, we don't have a natural gas geyser on the map, so we can't do anything that involves a gas stove un unless we got flatulent dupes, which is a whole thing in and of itself, right? We've got 1,500 units of lumber. We might be able to get ethanol distilleries going next stream. That could be a thing. I mean, we were talking about doing it, but, you know... God, this, this playthrough, for some reason, makes me just that little bit nervous, you know? Just go again on Ani? I mean, dude, if, if you're enjoying it and you want to do it, go for it. Nothing says you can't do that. Core base is a little more breathable. I hate to keep spamming airflow tiles everywhere, but we need airflow. Yeah, guys, I'm getting a little bit on the hungry side. We're gonna, we're probably gonna end right around time today. Uh, we got the radioactive research up. I mean, do whatever feels right. I know that feeling, though, being like, ah, oh, I kind of want to do this, but I also kind of want to do this, or I kind of want to take a break. So I totally understand that, Killer. Like, I kind of want to go forever. Like, I, don't, I like this playthrough. I'm enjoying it. I'm in the headspace, but I'm also hungry. And, like, I also have other games that I want to play later in the week, too. So I, I get you. I totally get you. Our stress is definitely on the high side. Zed's the only one who's not stressed. Zed, you spend all day cooking and chilling. Exactly your style.
I mean, after cracking open those little spots and uh, using that cold to balance the heat from the hydrogen vent, I, I feel like we're actually making some good progress here. Base, is, base looks kind of stabilized. In fact, our industrial area is chilled. Which is crazy. Oh, because we're pumping the... Uh... Yeah, we're pumping the cold water through there first. It's picking up enough heat. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's freaking awesome. This water is chilling this area, and this area's heat is heating up the water enough. We might wind up chilling out these plants here, but we can move those somewhere else. Uh, I don't think anybody did the tack treat today, but he's kind of asleep, so I try not to uh, wake the sleeping beast if at all possible. All right, our water situation is getting a little desperate, guys. Um, this is not the direction I want our water to go. It's okay, killer. You don't, you don't have to use them. I mean, it's nice that you want to. This takes half of the water coming out here is getting used for this. These are using water for lice loaf, though. Beard stroking. So I have to get used to the different co controls for it. Yeah, they, they are, some of them are the same and some of them are very different, which makes it difficult. It's getting cold enough up here that it's going to start stifling these plants. Ani, I always think the dig is the base button. Yeah.
Uh, the one that gets me is rotate and copy. Like O is copy in RimWorld and B is copy in Ani. Uh, and since, uh, like, I always go to hit rotate E and Q, like in RimWorld, and then I always hit copy with the O on RimWorld. Like, there, there's just a few minor differences, and, like, some of them almost overlap, so it makes it difficult sometimes to be like, oh... That hatchling. I forgot that the critters have a move to command now. Okay, we've got lumber. I think tomorrow we really got to focus on getting our ethanol distillery and petroleum generators up because that's going to generate us um, that's going to generate us more polluted water and then that and we got to combine that with getting the polluted oxygen vent uh, going for air which means infinite oxygen storage just like the infinite uh, hydrogen storage so that's going to be a whole thing Thank you for the stretch, R. Dodo. Oh, much appreciated. Let's get that stretch going. Oh, that water tank has just been hairy this whole time. Hydrate and posture check. Thank you, thank you. So in this last couple of minutes here, We got to think about how we're going to handle this. I know I've been talking about it all stream, but that's that's this whole game is like future planning while current crisis managing, you know? You know what I, th I might do here? temp shift plates down there. That should help get the cold out of there. Get that stuff melted a little quicker. Considering the heat coming in for our hydrogen vent and the cold coming in for when we opened up, I'd say we're pretty nicely balanced in the green here. This may have been premature, getting this open. Get that sand swept. Not back yet, bathroom break. Well, I'm, I'm getting close to done anyway, Barb, but welcome back.
Yeah, green enough that we actually started opening up and letting some more cold in to balance it out. Back to my movie. Okay. Oh, everybody's hitting me with the hydrates. Good thing we're getting close to the end here. Because I'm going to need to use the restroom again soon, and I definitely don't want to, uh... Don't want to have to take another break. See you soon. Move that hatch. Hatch is in the exact wrong spot. Like, I do not want him over here eating all the stuff. It's weird how that animation overlapped. I've got so much going on in my head with this, guys, but at the same time, I'm just like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it's all just everywhere. I'm, I've got a million things going on. Like, we might break over and, and like, just kind of go through here and let this brine spill in, since this is going to be where our stuff, where our water eventually is going to be. Anyway, we've got snow over here. We've got brine ice up here. Uh, if we have to, we can always dig up closer to the surface where we can snag some ice up here, drop that in. Uh, we're getting to the point where we've got enough heat to play with, so that's why I keep talking about wanting to get the map strip mined out. Like, with having this much heat and this much cold to balance, if we can strip out the map and start kind of, I don't know, taking it over. I mean, this stuff comes out at 60 degrees, which is not too bad. Uh, it's not, it's, it, it, it's heat slash cool. Like, it's way cooler than 500 degrees, so when this becomes a problem, we could use the, the 60 degree stuff, and that'll be a lot better for us. We've got plenty of cold all around the map. Um, there are just so many things. I was just thinking about putting uh, incubators down, and I'm like, yeah, I, I just, it's not even worth doing just yet. And like I said, I'd love to get the uh, the carbon skimmer down maybe over here, because that would be cool. Alright, and Killer's over there doing some, uh, some coring out. Our stress is up to 56. Line is 56, Sweetney 52. So they're gonna be getting on the tables. Why are you standing in the red, unbreathable part? Jesus.
I honestly don't know how I'm going to get to a monument, guys. Um, I know I like I know I could conquer this map. That doesn't that, but like getting to a monument before the end of a month, um, we are probably gonna have to dedicate the rest of the month, like four days a week, to this. Maybe even start doing five days a week of this. Like I I, I don't even want to stop streaming at this point. Like stream every day status, you know. Yeah, I don't want to overdo it. You're absolutely right, Killer. Like, I definitely don't want to overdo it. God, well, look how gorgeous that is. Just look how gorgeous that is. I might have to make that... What does it take to get a massage parlor? No industrial machinery. Decor item. 12 tiles. Two 4x4 four four is 16. Is that all it takes? Decor minimum size. Okay. If that's all it takes, let's put a massage clinic up. Like, that's the thing about this game in RimWorld. I can sit back and just watch it. You know, set the work, go, treat it like an ant farm status. I mean, with 1,500 units of lumber... Yeah, we gotta get into ethanol production. We gotta get into so many things. Alright, let's just give it a few more minutes of staring, guys. These temp shift plates are actually doing their job. I know it doesn't look like it, but they are. Definitely, definitely air and water. I see now why we needed that polluted oxygen vent. 
I mean, if we'd have done it early on, we'd have wound up with a lot of people with yucky lungs, but I think yucky lungs would have been better than how tight our water supply has been. Bringing on those other dupes uh, has them breathing a lot more, which is leaning a little bit more on our on our water. We're still using water to make lice loaf, which is a problem. We could switch over to pickled meal, but then we start cooking through our dirt a lot faster. We don't really have any other options as far as... Oh, you know what? We have, uh, we have that fungus. That's right. Hang on. What is it called? Dusk caps from fungal spores. Hang on. I know we got some in the printing pod. We're going to take the pip. Um, I didn't put this on the list. We have one fungal spore. Yeah. We would have to wild plant them, but the fungal spores could be a thing. We got to get that going. That's totally something that, uh, that Barb told me to do, and I completely dropped the ball on it. Because they just need to be in CO2. So we could turn this whole thing down here into some sort of fungal spore farm. Meaning we wouldn't necessarily want to make this our water tank. But we do want to get this stuff cleared out of here. Okay. Okay, let's add that to the list so I don't forget it. That would have been something that would be... That's going right at the top of the list. If we could get fungal spores going and get off of making lice loaf... This is why you got to pay attention. Massage stress relief bonus. All right. Considering how much stress our dupes have had, that's good. That was a nice quick little end of the stream situation. Um, and again, guys, I, I know I've been a little low energy today. To yesterday's nine plus hour stream of finishing RimWorld. Not, not just the amount of time, but the fact that it was an intense time getting that playthrough done. I uh, was very worried when we got to the, the last map over there. I mean, it's not amazing, but I feel like the breathability is kind of getting somewhere.
So what I'm thinking looking at the CO2, right? We'll have to create natural tiles, which is an absolute waste of materials. But to get the dust cap farm going, I think it would be worth doing. I mean, we could run... I could actually do them down here, though. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I don't know how many we're going to need. We'll get them planted wherever we can get them planted to start. Because we only have one to start, right? Because if we can get mushrooms going... Because even though we're using meal lice, which is using dirt, we're turning it into lice loaf. And the lice loaf is using water. We got to we gotta find a way to transition off of all of our water use without... Without whatever, I, I don't even know. We got to get off of using water as much as possible. We need, we need to use this for air. We need to use the dust caps for food. And if we can get to the, if we can get to that point, that would be great. And if we can get ethanol, we can kind of start creating more water. Um, one last look at the temperature before we call it for the day. Okay. Let's hit the save button. Um, let's call it a day. Um, let's see if any of the friends or fa and family are on. Uh, cause I, I don't, uh, I don't have it in me to go and make new friends right now, but if one of our, uh, one of the close people to our group is online. We'll go and show them some love. Uh, do, 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 All right. None of the, none of our main community is online. So I'm just going to call it for the day, guys. Uh, we're going to get back at this tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do a lot of, I know I just talked about a whole bunch of stuff, put it on the list. Um, we have to do all of it, not all of it tomorrow, but we have to do all of it in general. So, we're going to try and prioritize. I'll think about it tonight. Uh, I'm going to go get some food, and then what I'll probably do is hop on Minecraft and do some grinding for the weekend um, because I don't have it in my head to be creative or solve problems. But I would like to get some uh, some resource grinding in so this weekend we can get some stuff done on Minecraft uh, on the server. But, yeah, guys, uh, good day all in all. Uh, kitchen got built. We built our radiation research so we can actually get some of that going soon. And... Uh, we haven't died yet. We got two new dupes. So we'll call that a win. I'll see everybody here tomorrow, noon to six Pacific Standard. Uh, have yourselves all a wonderful night and take care of yourselves. Be well.